Well, <laughs> your normal budget presentation. Your, All right. Um, give a little overview. Yeah, my budget didn't change a lot. I think overall it went down a smidge. Um, my health insurance went down because my wife has her own for the school this year. Um, and then all my land maintenance stuff, I got quoted at a 13% increase, so that went up. So it kind of, they kind of offset a little bit. Um, like I said, everything's getting more expensive, but with the health insurance going down, it pretty much stayed status quo. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, my, my entire budget is my, my salary and health benefits and all that, and then land maintenance. Um, some porta potty rentals um, that went up as well, and our senior citizen bus trip. Um, we do two thousand dollars for that every year. Um, it depends on where we go. Sometimes we spend all two thousand. Looks like this past year we used just under seventeen hundred of it. Um, we went to the Freiburg Fair. They had a fantastic day. I'm told I was sick. I couldn't go. Jan helped me out and ran the good time. The check off less. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Four. We had a full bus. I think forty ended up going instead of. I think we had fifty. Or I think we had forty-five go, and we had fifty-five signed up. But we had ten not show up that day. They were sick too. Probably. I had strep throat or something. It was. wasn't good. Jan was very happy though. He got everybody back on the bus. He returned with the same number he went with. I was happy Nobody too. arrested. <laughs> you didn't do a very good job. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't that. It wasn't that. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you get your porta potties? Ideal. Ideal. Yep. Um, used to use used to use Crockett, and then they went to uh, Roy Griffin. Um, we had we had one year where I had some billing issues with them, so the next year I called around and Crockett or uh, Ideal beat everybody. Um, so I've been using them for the last few years. How many do you have? Uh, three. <laughs> So uh, two at the rec fields and one at 80 Gray, and then I do one. I do one for Pine Street Landing too, but that doesn't come out of my budget. Yeah, it comes out of the shopper's budget, correct? Yeah. I order them for for Foster Field and for Friendship Field too, um, but it doesn't come yeah. out of my budget. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, they're they're great. They I've had like I said, they were right in the ballpark with everybody else. If I mm. there's a problem, I call them. They show up. They are in the ballpark. Huh? They are in the ballpark. In the ballpark. <laughs> <laughs> You're not opening for McKinney's. Not with a comedy routine. <laughs> what do you pay a month? Is it 150 or less on the unit? 150. What? Oh, no, nothing. I, I think I think it's 150. There's a they, right now they have a five dollar surcharge for fuel. They've been doing that yeah. since fuel spiked. So it's either 150, 155, or 145. It's in it's in the 150 ballpark. When I took over, it was like 120. Yeah, and no, no. they've just everything's going up. Yeah, your land maintenance. Um, yep. For the 23, you just uh, under 11 budgeted. You know, you use the rest of that between now and the end of the year. Yep. Yeah, I already have stuff field. ordered. Um, spring fertilizer, grass seed to fill in, uh, turfus for the ball field, stuff like that. Um, mound clay to fix the pitching mound. Um, yeah, that'll that'll be gone. For sure. I've already I've already ordered most of it. They did. They had a uh, fall special where they said they said if you order it in the spring, it's going to be more money. Yeah. You don't have to pay now, but you have to order it now. So I ordered everything last October. So that that money is already spoke for. Did that increase in that maintenance stuff? Is because of what you project? They told they they usually give me a printout like I'm like hey give me the you know give me the prices for the next year which the way we do budgets it's it's a little behind but it's as close as I can get and he wouldn't even give me a printout he said he said we're quoting everybody at 13 percent increase on everything so that's what I put in I I went through every line of fertilizer grass seed spray all all of it and just times 13 percent to all of it Bob now, how do you Tough question, but how do you measure the performance of the programs you're doing? Just uh, numbers usually. Um, where most of my programs have bounced back to to pre-COVID numbers, some of them have exceeded it, um, and then some some haven't. Um, the ski club I'm running right now is just can't seem to get people to sign up. Hmm. Um, I put it out there, and people don't seem want to 
to want to go. Now, and it was never a very big program, but this year, just struggling. But uh, pickleball, you know, we used to have anywhere from two or three to maybe eight to ten, and we've had 20 to 25 every every week since since October. That that has just blown up. And how does that program work? People pay a fee. They pay five dollars uh, per session. So okay. I, I mean, with the we've been averaging about 16 to 20. So I've been bringing in about 80 to 100 dollars every time I have a pickleball session, and that goes into my enterprise account. It helps me. I just bought up two new nets for them because um, the nets we started with were getting kind of bad. So all that money goes back into buying stuff for the programs. And would that segue if Sylvania ever came to anything? Would that segue into that property? Yeah, I, mean, I could. I could. <clears throat> Some of, some of that enterprise money could go to sprucing up. I, it, it's for normal recreational supplies, I would say. If you're going to do something big like, you know, a, put in a basketball hoop, that's something I would budget for. Mm -hmm. But if I needed some basketballs or just some pickleball nets to set out there, some portable ones, that's, that's something that would come out of the enterprise account. It's, it's, yeah, all my registration monies, all my revenues go into it and then... You know, T-shirts for the kids, trophies, basketballs, all the little stuff that adds up comes out of that. My summer ramp, my summer camp is completely funded through that program. Um, so, what would you like to be doing that you can't do, that you find yourself restricted? For? I don't. I don't know. It's a good question. So, I, as far as you know. <clears throat> um, I, my summer camp should be coming back. I haven't got full approval from the school. Having, you know, we've we've always talked about a community center. Having my own place to run stuff like that, where I don't have to wait every year to get permission to use something, would be phenomenal. And if I had the place like that, I could I could run pickleball every day. You know, I could. That's that's there's a lot more I could do if I had a facility of my own. Where I'm <clears throat> here at the office, it's kind of I do stuff when I can, and. It keeps me pretty busy, but. Do we ever have programs that are targeted to teenagers? So, so the ski club, ski club is open to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, I have adult softball. You have to be 18 to play in that. But right. there's, there's still a couple, few teenagers that do. As far as like the sports go, we we pretty much focus on kindergarten through sixth grade, because yeah. when they get into middle school, middle school, the middle school and high school offer sports teams for those kids. Um, if there's other programs that don't involve sports, you know, I'm, I'm all for it. It's just got to have people in place to, to help run them. Probably a bad idea. I was just thinking about the occasional dance on a Friday night for the kids. Yeah, know, high school kids said, the, yeah the, high school the schools kids. usually do most of the dances, but like I said, I'm a, if, if people have that's how that's how my programs run. People come to me and say, "I want to do this," and I put it together and we make it work. But I have to have people to do it because I can't, I can't run all these programs that right. yeah, I'm I'm full as far as what I can do right now. But oh, we've just had two guys, uh, two new guys on the recreation committee apply and mm -hmm. been appointed. Yep. Is that going to be of help to you? Is that yeah. Gonna give yeah. You we've <clears throat> we have a rec committee of seven. Um, I'm the seventh member. We have six others. Um, we've had <clears throat> we've had one vacancy since last summer. Uh, Troy Smith got done. He got a new job as the Oceanside athletic director and just couldn't couldn't make the meetings. Um, and so we went quite a while with the vacancy, and then we actually had another lady step down, Karen. Um, and so we got we ended up getting Troy's seat filled pretty quick, and then we got Karen's seat filled pretty quick. So we're back up to full full number. So it's it makes it a lot easier to get a quorum when we have a have a meeting. We we meet once a month, uh, weather permitting. Yep. So we didn't we didn't meet in February. We met in January, but we have one coming up next week. Okay. Thank you. Yep. When do you meet next week, Ellie? Uh, Wednesday oh, at six. Open. Yep, it's open here. If you let me know, you just want to talk about the two fiftieth. Yeah, I'll put you on the agenda. <clears throat> Did you have um, you have the same success we had with a skating rink this year? No, we had zero success with that's, a skating rink that's this what year. I'm saying. <laughs>
Um, yeah, the weather didn't cooperate, and we, we went back to using our nice rink. Last year, we just did some corrugated pipe mm -hmm. with liner over it, which was great for shoveling off, but we ran into some problems with uh, ice thickness. It wasn't deep enough. Mm -hmm. So I went back to the boards this year. I think we made the angles in the corners a little too drastic, mm -hmm. and so we filled it up once, and one of those corners popped, and all the water went rushing out. Um, so we filled it up again. We, we spiked every everything. We got it all spiked, and it uh, we filled it up again. It froze, and then one of the sides popped out, but it already froze a little bit, so it was safe. So we cleaned it up, and we got some decent use out of it for, I'd say, a couple weeks. Um, but with the warm weather, we yep. really struggled. Yep. And then and then another side popped, yep. and I just gave up on it at that mm. point. It's, it's waiting to be the snow to... I totally fall out of it and take it down for the year. We'll we'll try again next year, but this year was really rough. <laughs> is your liner still in pretty good shape? Yeah, the liner is in in great shape, as far as I know. We'll we'll know more when we get the snow and ice off of it, but it's, I shouldn't have to replace the liner next year. Good. So. Anybody else have any questions for Marcus? What's that fund you say you can put money into? Is that my enterprise account? Is that in the revenue anywhere? No. Is that just like a? It's a. It's the way that he brings in money to offset the programs that he has. So it's usually a net zero, or there's usually something in there that pays for like summer rent, some of the other programs. I Sometimes you have to buy electricity from somebody. Right? <coughs> that might be in a little bit of repair. So. Yeah, it's like I said, it's. When I get when it got handed down from Kyle, he said, you know, use this for your everyday stuff. If you have like, you know, if you have to buy a soccer goal, you should probably budget for that. But for little stuff, that's what I use it for. So I build it up throughout the year. You know, my my youth soccer makes a little bit of money, um, and my youth basketball makes a little bit of money. Everything kind of make pickleball's been making decent money, and my summer camp is breaks even at best usually loses a little bit of money just because it's so expensive to run but I pay all my all my staff for that all my staff all my field trips all that come out of that account so that's why I was gonna ask you that was the only thing here about summer wreck and all that so yeah no it's it's all run through that account so like I said we you I use I use the the profits from the all the other programs to kind of keep the costs down on summer wreck so that it's it's more affordable it's that's it's, why you don't see all the costs from programs and right wreck. right because that's I mean yeah, that would that would make my budget look a lot different if we put the revenues in and put, I had a budget for all those the summer the summer rec stuff and every program it would be a lot different. Um, I've I've seen some surveys done throughout the state, it, like ninety five percent of rec programs have an enterprise account and that's how they they run things. Very very few are fully budgeted. Marcus, yeah. what's your Total for the year that goes in in and out of the enterprise account, not net, but what's what, what kind of order of magnitude of funds are you working with there? Yeah, so you want to know how much money is in there? Well, I mean, how much do you take in and spend every year? Yeah, it varies. On the last couple of years, have been a lot different because my summer camp went to a full day instead of just the nine to one, so it went from a pretty small camp to a lot bigger. Um, last last year we had our max is 45 kids per week. Um, we filled that a couple times. Every other week was in the 30s to low 40s, um, and, and it's it was 135 dollars a week per kid. So just that program alone brought in close to 40 50 thousand dollars. But it cost that much to run it. Staffing, staffing. I had four staff members on all the time. And then when we went on field trips, I had six. Um, and that doesn't include me. Um, I'm there quite often. But <clears throat> And then the busing. Um, we used to use the school. They were very good to us about getting us a bus driver and pretty much letting us use the bus at cost. Um, they couldn't get us a bus driver last year, so we had to use Loose. They were fantastic. They show up every time, but they're a business for profit. So it cost me a lot more money to bust the kids to Fun Town or Aquaboggin or wherever we're going for the day. Um, we run two field trips a week. Um, so they, they go swimming on Tuesdays and they'll do a bigger trip 
bigger trip on Thursdays. We do, they, they'll go bowling here in town, uh, monkey see, monkey do, aqua bog in, fun town, urban air, <coughs> something fun. You ever thought about going to Gray's Animal Farm or anything like that? Uh, we, yeah, we went to, we went to the, is, is that, it, the, we went to the animal park in Gray as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah one, year, one year we got rained out, the next year, last year we went, I think. Yeah, I, didn't know, I, didn't, I didn't make it on that trip, but I think I'm pretty sure that we went. <clears throat> I had it scheduled. Yep. So, yeah, that's another one we do. <clears throat> so it's been nice having the full day, full day camp. We, we've been able to do stuff like that. It helps us bring in more kids because they're like, oh, you're going to Funtown. I want to come to that. Whereas before, when we were 9 to 1, you know, we couldn't go to Funtown because by the time we got there, we'd have to come back. So back then we used to... You know, we go to West Cassett Rec to the pool or somewhere a lot closer. Um, so that it's been nice to run the run the bigger camp. It just costs a lot more to run, but it's a lot more expensive for the kids to come too. It was when it was nine to one, it was forty dollars a week for the kids, and last year it was one one thirty five. And I'm, I think that's going to have to increase this year. So we were, I found out we were a little, little underpriced compared to all the other camps around. So. So, with the other programs, the soccer and the basketball and stuff, yep. does that yep. 40, 40 to 50,000 for the summer camp? And that? Yep. So, yeah, soccer soccer usually brings in two to 3,000, I'd say. And then uh, co-ed softball has been our biggest money moneymaker. Um, we have, we've been up to 15 teams the last couple of years, which is a, a program high. I think Kyle had... Kyle had a year where it was 15. Um, when I took over, I think we were down to eight teams, and it's built back up to 15 the last couple of years. Um, they, third, I think it's $30 a player, Thir 30 or 40, I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but that, that program brings in five or $6,000 a year, um, which is a, a great money maker for, to help offset the summer camp. Um, so the total is right around 60. 60, a year yeah, year? probably sixty, seventy thousand that come in, and then, mo like I said, most it's, it's not a it's not a for profit, right thing. So most most of it goes back out into into other stuff, either the summer camp or T-shirts, trophies, other equipment. You know, someone <clears throat> someone stole the bases uh, off Bagley Field last year, so I have a box sitting by my desk of you know three hundred dollars worth of brand new bases for Bagley Field for this year. And you know that wasn't something I budgeted for. I just used the enterprise account to yeah. to fix what needed to be fixed. And so, so it's been the the account's been building since I I've taken over. What you know, there's more money in there now than when Kyle gave it to me. But it's it's not the goal. It's just to have some have a fun there to yeah, to, work with. to work with. So do you administer that, or does Peg? I just want that? to expand on. I thought that yeah. was where you were going. <laughs> Um, when we call it the Enterprise Fund, that's a term from our auditor for Recreation Enterprise Fund. But every bill and every receivable that comes in and out goes through the same as any way, every other way, at the counter or we get an invoice and it goes approved right. through the same process. It just is coded towards 621 yeah. Rec Enterprise. So yeah. that's the way it's. And then he keeps separate. We can run reports. They just don't have a beginning budget and an ending budget balance, but on his, he has a... Um, Microsoft, it's Microsoft money. money. It's like yeah, QuickBooks, so but so I have it on my computer, and every every time I put something through, like today, I had $70 from Pickleball, so I gave that to Pam. She put it through at the counter, and I go in my little thing and put a deposit in for and $70. And then I write reports, and he can, just to be sure that he's not missed anything that's right. coming in or out, so Recon it works out for you. Reconcile every few months or so. All right. I think we have up next will be uh, Chief John Lash of the Police Department. And that will be on page 23. Question is, did you buy those bases? No. Yeah. 
we didn't find the bases. Actually, my boy was playing the day that they needed the bases. So. Um, did you speak to them about the policy? Are we going to do that um, or no? We're going to do that next Tuesday. Okay. okay. I meant to see you earlier today. Okay. Well, that's All righty. If anybody doesn't know me, I'm John. I'm the police chief. <coughs> so I'm just going to run down through my budget. Uh, the big money item this year is contractual raises. Um, that made, makes up about seven of that almost 11% that we went off with contractual raises uh, for the guys. Um, on line 1020, if you guys have your books out, um, I added 160 hours to our part-time assistant, uh, admin assistant. She just, uh, she's needing more than the 20 hours a week. So I added, added a few more hours. Um, the second big thing you'll see is the difference from last year is uh, it's going to be 1050, line 1050, and there's call out money added into the overtime money. That actually doesn't get paid out as overtime. So, what we're doing is I've got guys on call from 4 to 6 in the morning because we don't 24 7 because the county's doesn't have anybody out, and I don't want my guy being the only guy out. So, we're everybody's call out now. So that they get paid a straight pay for call out just for being on call those two hours, and then if they get called out, it becomes a three hour call out per union contract. So that's where that extra money comes. That's that extra eleven thousand dollars in there. That's for three hundred sixty five days a year, two extra hours. Um, then the in line six thirty, I can make a cut right off the bat because I made a mistake. 60, 60 30. Uh, we can cut. It's uh, the it's uh, twenty one thousand forty eight. We can cut seven thousand dollars right out of that. Um, so basically, what happened is our uh, the system that we use IMC down at the at dispatch. That that's how we record all our calls. Um, there we're switching systems, and we'll, I'll talk about that when we get to capital. Um, so the the yearly rate to run that system is split up amongst the county and all the other municipalities. We pay a percentage of that. Well, the percentage is going up to twelve thousand five hundred, um, but we already had seven thousand dollars budgeted in there, so I didn't need to add that whole twelve five. So, like I said, we can take seven thousand right out of that line, which would have to. So we'd have to leave about fourteen five in that line. So I have even better news for you that I got earlier today. Okay. Is that they're not planning on that going live anytime before January first, or maybe even July first. So we might not. I would at least half of what we expected. So it can probably. So we don't have to budget for it this year. We have half to. Of it. I would budget half of it this year, but even on the capital side, I would do half and half, so half this year, half next year. Okay. So um, I think that's. I think that would be fair. So we could, we might even be able to take it down okay. a little more. Right. Uh, the next line that we uh, added a little bit to was the uh, gasoline line, which is line 6040. Um, just didn't budget for four dollars a gallon gasoline this year, um, and we're going to end up going over this year. So we just didn't want to go over the next year. Um, I've got it in there at four dollars a gallon. That's high. Um, we could possibly cut, you know, thirty-two hundred dollars out of it. We put it at like three fifty a gallon, but it's kind of a gamble. Um, oh, sorry, what was it? You can't lock in that. You sorry, so you can't lock that in either, can you? And we don't pay pump price, correct? correct. So what's the discount? It's, we don't pay tax. There's no Fed right, tax. There's no state. No excise. Probably forty cents. Yeah. Forty-three cents. It used to be thirty, about thirty-two per gallon. So I mean that three fifty might um, three fifty a gallon might make more sense, depending on what happens in the world. Who knows? I heard oil prices will drop. It's going to drop. Okay. Well, we can we can put three fifty in there. If you want. And uh, so that line would have your lips to somebody's ears. That line would have to be about twenty-two thousand five hundred instead of twenty-six thousand. Twenty-two five. Twenty-two five. Really 
comfortable with that? Yeah, I'd ask the same question. I'm not comfortable with any cuts, but we have. <laughs> <laughs> Only a couple thousand dollars. Yeah, I, why <clears throat> be so penny pinch? I mean, if you need it, you need it, and you haven't budgeted for it, then we're all in the suit. But at least you've budgeted, and if we don't yeah. spend it, hey, good. Right? This year. I'll leave that up to you guys. It's, it's, just, it's just an option. It's hard when it comes to the gasoline. Um, I mean, John's department might be the only department that might have some leeway with gasoline, but then you're talking about yeah, mileage. Mileage, and yeah. we'd have to, you know, have some kind of a mileage cap each night and stuff. Like I know the state does it, but and that's a that's a catch twenty two. Mm -hmm. You that three fifty. It's probably going to be three bucks with your without paying right. tax. So yeah. it, was that fifty cents? Yeah, like I said, as long as, as long as we don't start another war or something and it goes back up, we should be all right. What's the feeling on that? Do we want to leave it or do you want to cut it? Or you're not sure? How do you fund your overage if you overspend that account? Hopefully I got some left over somewhere else. So what are you thinking of doing this year? Uh, this year will be all right because uh, we've had a position open, so we'll have leftover money in the operating just from not hiring that position. So we'll be all right this year. Is it is it kosher to take money out of personnel accounts and put it in gas? Is that how, how does that work? If you go over in your it's it's your line item your total cost for your department that's being approved. Okay. It's not just that one. Same it's not just that one little. You're not pigeonholed into that. Yeah. Um, but any, he's not going to go over his overall budget. He's going to go over his budget line item. That's it. Yeah. <clears throat> Which I think you'll probably have money left over. You guys don't squander it, so right. yeah. we usually have. No, I, I don't put any fluff in here. Let's yeah. put it that way. Yep. Yeah. No, there's not. I, and I. I I mean, radios. Yeah, John's not. Your radios this year, you've only spent $287. You budgeted for $1,500. And, 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 and that, we may have to replace the radio. We just, you never know. Right, but I mean, you've yeah. got no, that money correct, there. Correct, I mean, you, you know, only like, spent like less the than last, 300 of the 15 The last so. few years, we may not have used all our overtime, but we went way over on our part-timers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it all evens out in the end. Mm -hmm. It's hard when, you, when you're trying to, and I, I've given John a lot of credit for this because it, sometimes it hasn't worked out like this, but since John's been chief, we've really tried to, to hone in on and maintain the bet budget at a level, you know, you haven't seen a lot of ups and downs in the operating, at least the end of it. Um, but even with trying to fill the positions, um, we have had some leeway, but we've always budgeted for that extra position. Um, and he has some good news about that, too. Yeah. So I made a conditional offer on my last open position. So if all goes well, I will be up to full staff by July, June, July. That's my hope. Because I've got my other new guy just hired going to the academy in August. So I'm hoping to have the and other guy here by August. And so that also would affect what we're budgeting then for overtime. Correct. Right. So and, and you know, if all goes well, next year our overtime line can go way down. We can't yet because I got two guys have to go to the academy this budget year. But but then the next year, once full staff, that like it could go down drastically. You got to keep them. Yeah, yeah I'm training them in town somewhere else. Yeah. Uh, well, the town's been good, giving these guys good raises, so it's really helped. Yes, sir. Well. That actually segues to the next question. Uh, who's funding the police academy? Um, and how do we retain these employees for so, uh, having so trained them? We, we, pay, we pay them to go to the academy. So we pay the academy a fee. And then we also pay them while they're there. Um, and then let's just say they come back and they're kind of prorated. So they have to stay here for five years if they leave before that five years is up that department has to pay us back for them. 
So that's and it's it's worked really well. They're not a free agent until after no. five years. And I look, it's like tool, the uh, tools and equipment. You've only you still got twenty eight hundred dollars left in that account. It's you know, because vehicle I maintenance had still ordered got eight thousand left in that account. So, I mean, he said he hadn't ordered ammo yet. Then six thousand of that eight thousand will be gone as soon as I order ammo. I just wait for it to come in stock. But yeah, yeah. But it's looking at stuff you budgeted for last year and what you spent this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah this summarizes it, um, and. We haven't paid the, in, in the line I talked about here, uh, the 60-30 line, I said we, would cut, we haven't paid that maintenance fee yet, so there'll be $7,000 coming out of that here pretty quick once we get that bill. Yep. Speaking of maintenance, will at some point will your crews go up to DPW for maintenance? Um, at some point, they will go up there for some of the work, yes. Yeah. We, we, yeah, we we like to try to keep them as new as possible because it's all warranty work. Right. As I say, most of the cheap right. dealer right. items, stuff, the though. big stuff is warranty. Tires, oil yeah. changes, tires, oil stuff. chains, brakes. We're yeah. we're hoping we're going to get good. some equipment up there and. Yeah, and, and it, the biggest thing with that is just being able to go up there and get it done. Get it done, not to wait and it's going to be. It can't not have it out for a week or two. That's that's the tough part. So it's more of a convenience thing than anything, really. But yes, it will save us some money as well. Um, yeah, and then I guess we can go over capital unless we have any more questions on the operational. Capital is the, if you want to take a look at it, it's the big fold-out sheet. That might be the easiest way to look at it. And that would be if you flip it over polices right at the top, police equipment reserve. Yeah, and the, and the big ones there are the uh, cruiser, and uh, we had the $31,000 in for that new Central Square program. Uh, however, it sounds like maybe we could do half of that. We can do, um, after speaking with the county today, we can do half, we can save, we can cut that. So we can do $31,000 in half and do half of that this year. And we can do 15 the capital budget. 15 this year. Uh, I just wanted to speak a little bit about the cruisers. We're running into some problems getting cruisers. Um, so we ordered a cruiser, our cruiser we ordered last year, we haven't got yet, but the one we ordered this year, we got already. <laughs> so Ford's canceled our other cruiser twice. I guess it depends on what color they're making that month or week or whatever. Um, so we ended up getting a gray one before we got the black one. Um, so we're gonna end up getting two brand new cruisers kind of right at the same time. So that being said, we've got three cruisers that have very high mileage. Um, so our vehicle schedule is all wacky and getting thrown off. Um, so I was gonna offer, if we needed to make some cuts, our vehicle schedule is all screwed up anyway. So if I can't get a vehicle this coming year, like I said, we're gonna get two brand new ones kind of right at the same time. So it's not gonna be a huge deal. We will have some higher mileage vehicles, but like I said, we'll have two brand new ones as well. So if we're looking for areas to cut, that would be the safest bet for this coming year. Which cruises are the higher mileage vehicles? The higher mileage vehicles. So, so once we get, the other problem is getting the stuff to outfit them. So like right now, I've got a, a new cruiser sitting out there that's got nothing in it because we're waiting for stuff. Because we had stuff for the one we ordered last year. Um, yeah, right. Um, so the older, so what we'll have for mileage, so we'll have the, one of the oldest SUVs is going to have to go into the SRO, so that's not a huge deal. He goes back and forth to the school. We'll be getting rid of the Charger and the, um, we'll be getting rid of the Charger and the uh, Taurus once, once the newest two are outfitted. So that will leave, uh, truck and the, the truck the explorer and then there's a 2017 explorer and a 2019 explorer 2020 2020 and the problem with the 2020 explorer is that's already got 60,000 miles on it because we're using that one a lot because of so but like like I said we're going to have two brand new ones here pretty quick and we can put <coughs> miles on those so does that Timing change your overall 
uh, layout of your vehicle replacement down the road? Or uh, no, I, our goal was to get one a year, yeah. knowing that hardship year we may have to give one up. But our, mm -hmm. but our goal was to get one a year, and that and that would put a cruiser at about a five year life cycle, and that's pretty old for a police cruiser. Yeah. So my my initial concern is if we put off funding one of these cars for a year, we're going to have to do two the next year to make it up. I, th I think we can make it work. We wouldn't have to. Um, but this would be the year we'd to do it because we're getting two right in a row because of the mess up with Ford. But you get three really old ones, so your net. No, no, we'll have to get creative on how we but shuffle around. you may around. not even get that car for two years. Right. Yeah. yeah. The, the problem is we're not... We're, we're having to be careful already because we're not getting the cars when we need them. Used to be able to just go to the lot and buy one. I say, I want a police package for Explorer. Yeah. And you buy it. No. It's been a year and six months for one of them. Right now, we still haven't got it. But my concern is that in the past, we haven't fully funded the capital based on our expectations of what's going to be needed for the next 10 years. And Oh, I would love to have an, get, another cruiser. I'm just offering. I'm just offering something up if, if, because I know there was a big number that needed to be cut. So. And do you think that's workable? I think it's workable. It's it's okay. it's much better than cutting anything in my operation. <coughs> so you could get away with one year of yeah. not having that in the budget. Yeah. Okay. Because, like I said, I think next year we can take a lot out of overtime, and then maybe that would offset some of that vehicle. It's, it's gonna it's gonna be a hard year this year just sending two guys to the academy, and I just that's why I, I want to be careful on that operational side. So what would you suggest as a change in, in, in the capital budget here? Uh, I would say that you can, if you want to take the whole thing out, you can, or if you just want to leave half of it in there, so we can just do half next year. And or, which one or would that be? That would be this. So I've got seventy-seven thousand. I'm requesting thirty-one of that was for that central square, which we can cut down to fifteen five, and then forty-six of that was for a cruiser. Yeah. So I'll, I, I mean, we could cut that in half. We could cut it all out. Um, I'll leave that up to the committee. And the two new cruisers that you have coming, those are all paid for already. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So if we did take it all out this year, you, but we could offset some of that with your overtime budget for next year. And budget that back in. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. You see what I mean? If he's got twenty thousand left over, you know, reduce it for the overtime. If we have to make up twenty three thousand for capital, I mean that's better than because we know as he, as he said, he's going to have a huge decrease in overtime next year for next year, yeah. right? Yeah. But we can make it up next year as well. Yeah. So we know what the number would be to have to replace. Yeah. Are we sending the um, the other vehicles to auction? Yeah, well, we usually trade them in. Yeah, let's trade them yeah. in. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Somebody did work their magic online and sell them for outrageous money? They they were excited for them until <laughs> the used vehicle market's gone down, yeah. so they're not yeah. so excited for them now. Yeah, we, try, I, we do. I, just so you know, we do sometimes look at, is it easier for us to sell if we sell them at a, on our online auction that we participate in with many other towns you know you can go on there you can look and see what comparable vehicles are going for and if the trade-in is worse than selling it flat out of auction the last time we looked the actual trade-in value was better than what the auction value was at that yeah. time because yeah, we sold a uh, ambulance one time and we got a ridiculous amount of money for it you do. It depends. <laughs> it depends what you're selling and when you're selling it. But we, on, um, I can't remember the name of our the website that we use, but it's like Gov, Gov Deals. If you go on there at any time, you can see what stuff's going for. And, and normally, when it comes to police cars, they're all pretty. And for I, a while there, the Chargers were worth something. <laughs> I figure when I figure the what I need for a cruiser, I figure the trade in because. Yeah, the cruiser cost me four thousand dollars. Uh, forty, th only forty thousand. However, an outfit it's over ten thousand now. Right. So that's right. six. And then if I get five for trade, I'll be pretty good. So yeah, it yeah. gives me about fifty-one or fifty-two that it actually costs to get it up and going. So 
So you're going to send, you have an officer going to the academy in August. Correct. And this other person, on the conditional offer, mm -hmm. they're, not, they're not an academy graduate. They're not. So, so my goal is to get all his paperwork in so he can, we can do them back to back. So you look at August and probably January. Yep. So you're going to have to fill those shifts. Correct. With the overtime. With the overtime. And that's and that's why I kind of wanted to leave that alone if we could. I mean, we could we could play around with the overtime a little bit, cut a little bit, but I wouldn't want to cut too much out of it. I'd rather, I would leave it. Makes I'd rather sense. cut the vehicle and leave the overtime. Yeah, because I mean, you know, you don't know what's going to happen. Right. You don't, you know, there are people who are going to be, have life, life events come up, you know, for hopefully not, but sick time or, you know, you're going to have to fill those shifts. Right. Yeah, we can't close down, unfortunately. We've got to stay open. And, and so you're, I mean, and you don't know what's going to happen with, so you can leave. I hate to say that, but that happens. Yeah, just happened a while ago. So I, I would leave overtime alone. Um, I know it's just it looks like it's a it's a big number there, but a lot of that's uh, the call out as well. And and the call out, so they're they're on call from I think you said four to six. Four to six in the morning they're on call. So they're they're paid. They're paid they, straight time just for those two hours are on call. Whether they get called out or not. Whether they get called out or not. That's just for the inconvenience of them being. Oh, cool. And if they get called out, they're getting they, paid. If they get called out, it's a three-hour overtime call-out per the union contract. And that's in that line? Or that, that, that That's in the overall um, overtime, overtime line. Okay. Yeah. I, I take an average of how many, <clears throat> basically, I, I guess it, I guess oh, it how many people that. are going to be sick and how long. I average about a week right. and a half, and I, you know, it's a... It's a tough number to come up with, but how long have you been doing the on call? We've been doing the on call since COVID, since uh, there was a lot of guys out all the time in the county. The, the biggest issue with the call out is for a while there we were the only one going 24/7, so the county was calling our guys first because we were on the road, so they were going to things all by themselves. But at least now, with we're on call out, if it's a serious call, two of us get the call. And we're going at the same time. So you're sending two people. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if it's if it's just like a car accident alarm or something, just one guy goes. But who makes that decision? So the guy on call makes that decision. Like, should I call them? You know. So so it's either so me. Certain. Yep. If it's a domestic. If it's a domestic, it's automatic two two yeah, response. Car accident. Car and, off oh yeah, car gear or something. It's one guy goes. And do you have any uh, numbers as to? From the time you've been doing this, how many times they've actually been called out? Yeah, it's not very much. I could count them on both my hands. <coughs> the hours of four to six is usually pretty slow. Yeah. Not <laughs> on Sometimes they hold something to the O six. Yeah, yeah. And if it's and if it's not some, you know if it's something serious, I've called and spoke with dispatch. Like, if it's if you don't think it's serious enough to call, you know, a guy can wait till six. Call me and ask me, and I'll say, yeah, wait till six. So it's the officer on call that's making that decision whether they're going to respond or not, Correct. not a yeah. supervisor. Correct. Yeah. So if you have a loose, I'm going to say like a, a loose dog call. Right. Somebody has their dog at the house. They might have to wait until 6 o'clock to <coughs> hand it over to somebody. It's, it's animal it's, control. It's, it's a little stressful because some guys don't like the on call thing, but it's it's been working. I would love to go back to just having a guy on. I really would, but I don't. I don't. The safety concern. I don't, I don't like it. So I would just much rather wait till the county has one out all night as well, and so they have backup, and vice versa. I'm sure the county. I mean, we've backed up the county. They've backed us up. So. Oh, I didn't know that we did that. I thought we had 24-hour coverage yeah. Yeah. on the road, and not, you know. I'd love to get back to that. Back in the day, I, mm -hmm. yeah, it was. It's pretty quiet between four and six generally. Definitely. So that officer comes off shift at four, mm -hmm. and then a new officer comes on at six. Correct. He doesn't come come back at six. No. Yeah. And just to let people <coughs> know, for example, the state police—they've done this forever. They go home at midnight. Yeah. Midnight. Knox County goes in at two. So it's not, you know, the days of the 24-hour coverage in, in, in a rural area is pretty rare right now. 
John, just a que question on the special details. Correct. Looks like those services have gone way down for the need. It, mm -hmm. I'm just kind of curious on you know, last year it was $613. Um, so I understand we have police officer at all of the basketball games and so that's that's billed out separately we build the school directly for that oh okay what's yeah. the cost of, what, what are they getting billed what's that what are they getting billed for they're hour? getting per, per hour benefit costs built into so whatever the hourly amount equivalent would be would be the regular rate of pay health insurance pension all of those costs for Cruiser. all of the personnel costs um cruiser costs I don't know that we do that. Only if we have a, there's other places where we would bill for private services, and John and I talked about that, of having a different special details rate that would include the cruiser, but the schools, I don't think we would do the cruiser. So, so like this year, the special details will be, well, I'm sure we'd be having guys at that 250th, um, parades, um, uh, graduation, we always used to, do for them an all call, but we've been billing them lately for, for graduation. But no, we haven't. We haven't been using that special uh, events line. Um, so we must have a fun balance of that. That's building. Well, it's under revenue. so what happens is when so. At the end of the year, it all goes to fund balance. It's not just a line item that doesn't. Okay. It doesn't. Yeah, I never, I never see that. I mean, that, okay. that goes somewhere else. It goes to our fund balance. But um, just to be clear, like when it's the 250th birthday of Wolfboro, we're not going to be charging. No, no, it's it'll come out of it, this it line. It comes out of this line item. We're not going to be charging that organization for. Right. Um, that and, and it will be. I'm sure it'll be overtime for a lot of the guys. Right. Yes, sir. You, <clears throat> you mentioned collective bargaining. Um, does the does the town do the negotiation, or is this a statewide or countywide uh, negotiation? Yeah. So, so the so our our guys are in a union, and then the town negotiates with the union. We made it, Mike. We made an adjustment <laughs> at the last. Uh, negotiations, which were last year, to bring um, us in line to make us competitive with what was the rate in the area. Mm -hmm. um, and the problem with any negotiation is once you've negotiated something that brings you in line, then somebody else negotiates ahead of you. Um, you're always playing catch up. And you're always playing catch up. But um, I, I, I think that the between the negotiations that occurred last year, um, Chief Lash's leadership, um, I think we've been able, like I said, you know, we had an open spot. We've now attracted two, two, and two more people uh, to Waldeboro, and and I think that that speaks highly of the job that the chief has done, and you know, throughout the department and and getting people to come and. And the people that we recruited, uh, the re we had a retirement recently, um, but we haven't had, um, we've been pretty stable for the last two years um, and retain and re recruiting and retaining people. Yeah, I was so. full staff for like three days. Yeah, <laughs> I, saw, I think it was 36 hours actually. Might have been. <laughs> John, are you, uh, are we gonna have housing problems for these guys coming in? Well, so we've, we've been pretty, um, fortunate uh, one of them already lives here and, and the other person has family here and they they want to move back and they plan on being here so yes but housing has been we've lost a couple candidates because of housing right. but this time I think we're, we're doing pretty well and and those are questions we ask and we're very straightforward with them when they you know when, when we talk to them say, do you have a place to live because if you don't then uh, you might want to reconsider Thank you. And, and another thing we did with pay, which is kind of not the, not the norm, is um, just looking at the generational differences. Um, we've decided to, to recruit this latest generation. I don't even know what we're at now. 
but um, they want to be paid the same. So now, as soon as you're an academy graduate, there's no steps, you're paid the same across the board, and that's really helped in recruiting people as well, because that new guy coming in, once he's through the academy, he gets paid as the same as the guy that's been here for 25 years, and that makes them feel good enough to come work here. Does it make the guy who's been here 45 years feel? Um, they were just the want, ones that negotiated they just, the contract. They, yeah, they oh, negotiated okay. the contract, and they, and they said, we just want help. We just don't want to work 80 hours a week. <laughs> that's so. But I will tell you, that is something that several towns who obviously look at our contract have said, <laughs> how, how has that gone over? And I think we're... I, as always, Walterboro lately tends to be trend-setting. I think we're going to be a trendsetter because it really does, they're doing the same job, you know. Um, but yeah, our most senior officers were the ones who negotiated the contract, so I think that speaks pretty highly. So how much did you want to reduce your cruiser <coughs> capital? I, I think if... If you need to take the whole thing, which is which you 46. take forty six thousand. Fifteen five in there though. Yes, but yeah, we need we need to leave that fifteen five. Yeah. So, so forty six. Yeah. Um, Instead of seventy seven thousand, it might be fifteen five. Fifteen five. Correct. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So, and I think you said on sixty thirty seven thousand. Uh, yes, yeah, sixty thirty. Yeah, I just I put too much in there. You can cut seven thousand right out of sixty thirty. Fifteen five on the capital on cruiser. So Correct. Just leave that. So you're cutting thirty one thousand, right? Um, so we're actually. So there's seventy seven thousand there. We can cut forty six. That leaves thirty one. Okay. And then we can cut that thirty one in half. So fifteen five. Okay, so wait a second. The 46 plus slow the 15. Slow down on those. Yeah. I got to write down on the right line. 46 out plus 15.5, correct. All right, so there's left, what's left at the bottom is 15.5. Oh, yeah. 15.5. Yeah, right under the 77,000. So are we back on the capital? Here? If you are on the big sheet, on the not quite Valsco big sheet, we have the 46,000 would come out for the car. And the new computer com, uh, communication system would go down to 15.5. Okay, what about next year in the capital budget for those items? Well, next year, we them in next year's? well, the 46 is already back in next year. For a different year. And then the 15.5 would carry over into 2025. Okay, so what about the, so are we paying for two cruisers in 2025? I would no. say the plan would be now to just buy we'll have, one. one. We're just, yeah, we're just skipping this year's. But I think what I was saying is, if he's got overtime left over, he can cut a majority of that out. Say it's 20000 Yeah. We would only have to fund another 26000 to replace that cruiser. Okay, but what about the cruiser that we're going to buy next year? Forty-four. That's in there for the forty-six, right? Right. So are we adding forty-six thousand? We're not to the next no. year's no. capital budget. No. Because he probably, even if he ordered it, he wouldn't get it in that year. So we're we're kind of losing a year. But you're paying for them ahead, of, like the ones you ordered now. You've already paid for. We're we're just so we're just gonna skip order. We're just gonna skip ordering one this year. So the theory is, and I think we should also think about we, this, we've already, skipping a year. We've already, because of the delay, we've already lost that year. So we can just skip it. We've already lost it. Okay. Plus you have to realize too, with some of the maintenance that can now be done up at the garage, that, that it will be easier to extend the life of that vehicle another year, essentially. The hopes. If they've That's been as the good as they, you know, as long as quality hasn't gone down, we should be able to. It is a Ford. <laughs> That's I don't know. Oh, they, oh, sorry. they don't make Toyota I'm sorry. Cruisers. <laughs> Trust me, I That's why it's lasted so long. Okay, but my my question is, does do all the cruiser replacements shift one year further out, 
Or do we have no, to You can just up. scratch that one out for this year, this next coming year. I, I so would, you're never going to replace that cruiser? No, well, just not using that I, I would have to... I would have to adjust it if we wanted to based on skipping the year. I can adjust this sheet out and then he might, or the mechanic might say, hey, I can get a year. He can go to the mechanic and say, hey, if you got to replace one, which one do you want? Which one's in better shape? So it might not be the 2017, maybe it would be the, or the 2020, maybe it would be the 2017. I don't know, but I'm, I'm just saying. But we still want to replace one, is what I'm getting at is, well, so we good. don't buy a new car this year, but the ones that we have are getting used up more. So the overall need over the next 10 years, is that going to change? Like, can we drop? You're probably you're probably putting it off a year. Putting everything off a year. It, All it, of the I, I, so without having a lot of knowledge of how long we could extend it, or having the benefit of speaking to the mechanic, I can't say which is going to go when. So what I would say is, the easy answer would be, I take those line items and I move them down a year. Just that, for the cruises, correct? Just for the cruises. Just for the cruisers. That being said, I just move it down one column. But what order they go in is something that John and the mechanic can talk about and decide. Yeah, the order is, isn't a financial problem. It's by taking a cruiser out one year and moving everything down there, that means all we're, the we're gonna We're going to adjust the way we use our... We're going to adjust the way we use our cruisers so that... Normally they have a five-year life cycle. Now they'll just have one, of, one, one or two of them six. will have a six-year life cycle. That's that's the only difference. We're just gonna we're just gonna. How, how are you uh, gonna do that? How are you gonna adjust it? Um, one, we're just gonna switch around which car the SRO uses, so that because that's the one the car that gets the least amount of mileage going back and forth to school. So they'll use that part of the year, and we'll switch. We're just gonna have to rotate them around, wash the mileage on the cars, and just move them around because some guys drive around more than other guys so we're just just we're just gonna have to watch the mileage having been a fleet manager for uh, an agency I think we need to be and I, I no if, problem with that. if you want to leave all that money in there well I, I just my, my <laughs> I, concern, I don't my, care my, my no my concern yeah. is is if is, is it's like a snowball a rolling snowball you end up with cars with higher mileage and then you have cars have transmission problems and maybe it's changed a lot. I mean, I, I, my, my, my concern is um, we don't want to get into a bind like some agencies have that their cruisers are down, they have to borrow cruisers. You see what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I mean, I'm talking 20 years ago when I was fleet. So, I mean, cars are probably better than that. I, I was asked to look for places to cut, and that's the only thing I really could give up. So that's why I'm offering it up. If you don't want to cut it, that is entirely up to the budget committee. Trust me, I would love to have it. I'm, just, I'm offering up a sacrifice here. I mean, it's... We also have the WEX program, which has really nice analytics for mileage for each cruiser. So that could be something if you wanted me to run something to keep an easy tab on with each vehicle. I mean, if it makes you feel better, like he said, don't cut the whole line item, but... Um. Well, I appreciate what you're doing. I mean, I, I, yeah. I appreciate that. I just... I'm, I'm just trying to be real careful with my operational. And I was told to find some stuff to cut. That's what I found. He said be prepared to cut. Be prepared. So, but I mean, so you don't have to take that full... If you don't want to, that full 48 out, but... So how many cruises do we currently have? Five. Five? And most of the time we only have two on, two officers on at the most. Plus the SRO. But the so, SRO so will be using the older vehicle. Correct. The, so there's, there's, five, there's five vehicles total. There's the one unmarked that Sergeant and I use when we're on call. He has it the weekends, I have it in the week. And then there's four marked vehicles. One's going to the school every day, and then the three other are in rotation. So the one that's on the ones that are on call are on the road constantly. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, they, they get used for patrol, um, but not as much as the other ones. I'm concerned about taking that whole cruiser out because basically then you're down to four cruisers plus a By shifting all the numbers down a year, you're assuming you're going to get six years out of every vehicle instead of five. And the, the history is that after five years, it should be replaced. And I mean, you're you're the one that uses the vehicles, so do you think you really think you could squeeze an extra year out of it? If the town vehicle? asks me to squeeze an extra year out of it because they need to make cuts, I will make it work. Well, the maintenance costs go way up, potentially. Potentially, but now we have a PW that can help us with that. Yeah. And what are the new... Oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, you're not doing this because you feel you can. You're doing it because you feel you ought to, if we need to cut the budget. But uh, where I have a problem is that um, you're going to have to get that vehicle at some point, and you may not be able to get it next year because they're just not going to have it available to deliver to you. Possibly. So you're, you're being, you're, what you're telling us is you're being forced to do this anyway because if you wanted a vehicle, you couldn't get it. You have that, to basically but, and go that's already what that's you're already happened. Yeah, yeah we right. know that. So and it's probably going to continue that way for at least another year. So whether you want a new one or not. Doesn't sound to me it. like you're going to get it. Possibly not. So, the only reason not to budget for it is to not include that amount in the mill rate for 2024. But the question is, is that a wise move? So, as I said when we sat down the first night, you are going to have to make difficult decisions. You either want a 23 and a half percent increase in the budget, which is going to translate into a huge increase in your mill rate, or you have to make difficult decisions this is one of those difficult decisions that you're going to have to make. I mean, you don't have to make it tonight because he's giving you the, the beauty of, and this is why I designed it, that we're not voting on these, is to give you the ability to say, you're going to be able to weigh John's uh, Chief Lash's $45,000 cruiser, $48,000 cruiser, versus do we pave an uh, unpaved road? That's why we held off voting, so that you guys can make these decisions and have these great discussions. So, um, right now you have six, uh, 162,000 and change in your capital, right? And you've already paid for those two new food um, those? Okay. I We, yes. Well, yeah, no, we. It's, it's about an $8,000 difference to yeah. round up. We still, we have, when we finally get one, we'll have yeah. to pay for it. Yeah. It's, bud it's budgeted from last year. Right. Yeah. Or two years that ago. That money is earmarked. We've already got it earmarked. Yeah. That money In that 162. Yes. Correct. Yeah. So, that, so yeah, yes. another 40,000 yeah. will come out of that. Come out of that. Yeah. So at the end of this year, your capital would be that number minus 40,000 or whatever. Correct. Six thousand or whatever. And you you do plan on getting a couple new vehicles this year? Correct. So I, okay. I've I've got one new one right now okay. that's just waiting to be outfitted, and then we're waiting for Ford to pick up the VIN from the one we ordered last year. Okay. We have Bob and Mike over here. Oh, yes. In extremis, if a transmission fell out of one of the vehicles, could the school resource officer take his personal vehicle to the school? Yeah, he yeah, had to. Yeah. Uh, the school likes having a marked cruiser there. That's why we have him take one. They just like the visibility of it there. But uh, no, he's actually, when we've been down vehicles, he's taken his personal vehicle to the school for. What about the shellfish truck, the municipal oh, truck? Oh, I forgot about that. Too. Yeah, I mean, that, that can be used as well. I mean, if need be, but I'd rather have that for the shellfish. Yes, Bob. 
I can remember in other meetings years ago when we used to have issues about the capital budget. In fact, we didn't even have a capital budget for a right, number of years. Is, yeah. And I just feel really uncomfortable getting off the program. I think we programmed the rate of replacement into this thing, and whether the vehicles are available or not, in the, in during a particular period of time, they're going to become available, and we will have put the money aside, raise the money and put it aside to do what we have to do. And I just think it's dangerous to, to deviate from a program that's been so carefully established and set forth in this document, and will be renewed every year and pushed out further. But um, I'm, I'm not comfortable cutting a capital thing like this. Not. And I mean, you already cut seven thousand out of your budget. That's a that's a nice place to start. I mean, that's a good. No, I mean that was that was that was my mistake for adding too much. So well, that that's fair. So you wouldn't be comfortable cutting it in half, anyways. I mean, if you offered that half that forty six. Well, you're getting half a vehicle. Um, and Maybe in two years. We might not be able to get it next year. Yeah, right. Well, he probably won't. Yeah. It's Sorry. better to leave some in the kitty than none. And remember, pennies add up, Bob. If we're going to cut a big amount, every little bit helps. You're right. I have a feeling this is going to be a large discussion at, a next, at another time when we're discussing capital overall. So yeah. I don't know if you want to move on to the next department. Thanks, John. Oh, wait. Oh, we have I got one more, one more thing. Billy. I don't know if it is, everybody noticed this. The two Johns came up with pretty creative ideas on how to cut the budget. But, John, could you share what you're going to do in September to everybody here? Oh, I'm going to <laughs> give a presentation on the history of Waldeboro Law Enforcement Historical Society. That's cool. Oh, that's next year. <coughs> oh, that's this year. Hmm? And Pam's yep. going to help me research. I can't take all the credit. <laughs> It'll be a group effort. Thank you, John. Get all the old timers to show up. Okay, before we say goodbye here, can we go through the cuts that were proposed and changes to the Well, I don't think so. What we had said originally was what he had suggested was right. removing the 48, or the 46, 46. I'm sorry. 46. And then cutting the computer system by half, which would be 15.5. But... None okay. of that's carved in stone, that's just... Right, but these, these are the proposed changes. Those were his, what he said, if you needed to cut them, it's available to cut. And then the other line items were on the, the six, operating budget on uh, 6030. Line 6030, you can take $7,000 out of that. So what would the total be? The total would have to stay at $14,500. 14488 I just rounded it. And the gas? The dam. The gas we found at 22.5. So I thought we minus. decided not to do that. Yeah. Well, we'll have to stop. Okay, proposed change. Proposed. <coughs> proposed. That was the proposed change. 22. And that that was just going from four dollars a gallon to three fifty. So what's what's the number twenty two? It's around 22.5, 22.750 maybe is exactly. Thank you. Did you want to do shellfish? Or do you want to put it here? I can get it in here. So is everybody... Not a lot of change. For, uh, the shellfish budget went up by $2,751. I just want to remind everybody that this is the, a budget that is fully funded by the planning community through their licensing fees. Okay. It, uh, it does fall under the police department, though, technically. But I have very little to do with it other than managing Justin, really. So. Right. And the only change, really, um, is related to change in salaries because um, it reflects what the part-time officer receives in the police department. And the animal control budget, is, uh, we're still contracting through the county for that. And so there's 
some small changes there only because of their, you know, the contracts they have with their people. That's on page 29. Just went up 500 bucks. Yeah, it's very minimal. You could just sign that contract, did Correct. It, it's been working out great. They had some struggles at first when they couldn't find help, and now that they've had an, an ACO, we've, we haven't hardly had any ACO calls. They've been handling most of them. It's been good. It's working out. Took some time, but. You mentioned the shellfish truck. Is that a separate vehicle, or is that one of the things? That, that's a separate vehicle. I mean, he he has he has arrest powers, so he has he has blue lights and sirens and stuff in the truck. But it's um, that's paid for by shellfish committee. The so truck that's is not part of the town. Um, so what we've done with the shellfish truck is split up. It's Technically, the purchase was made by the Shellfish Committee, not by anything that, not not by something that was funded by the town. It's not funded by the taxpayers of the town. The only thing that we occasionally we keep a mileage log, and then whatever department uses the mileage, we charge that off in their operations. Okay, so where did the money come from to buy the truck? Is that Shellfish. Is Shellfish Committee. Yep. yep. Shift conservation money. Does that show up in revenue, the revenue budget here yes, at all? Yes, there's revenue that comes in through shellfish yeah. licensing. It's shown in revenue, and then I don't believe that this, I think we're, I don't remember when the truck was bought, if that would show in this year on the capital budget or next. Um, what we, the trade in value was so great with that truck. That five year old truck, we only had to pay 12000 for a brand new one. Right. So that's why we traded in and bought a new truck. Right. Right. So it actually might reflect the what's their balance, but there's. Okay, so what happens to the license money for shellfish? The license money for shellfish is taken in as a revenue into the account, um, which is back in this back section of rev or the back of here by revenue page 63 page 60 is it, if it is page 63 so they come in and then that is the money that is used to support the shellfish committee so does this come into the general fund it comes into the general fund that is earmarked for the shellfish committee. Same thing with our conservation money, because guys pay for their conservation time, which in the last, since we've set up them being allowed to pay for their time, uh, we've taken anywhere from six to seven, eight thousand dollars a year just in conservation money. So that conservation and that's set aside money for paying does for the floats, paying for the truck. The conservation money technically goes into the capital fund. The license money goes into the general fund. Okay, so like the truck would have come out of the Pro general fund somewhere? No, it probably would have come out of the capital fund. Capital fund. Mm -hmm. But I don't, when did you get that? Last year. Uh, we got the new one this year. It's like well, three or four months ago, budget. five months ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, when we got the, the new, the when we got the new, when we got the new um, town truck. Yeah. Uh, the silver one. So, yeah, that's not going to, that's <coughs> already reflected, so that was already gone. So, so that was in the prior year's budget. With the capital. Be on, under, under the shellfish equipment reserve? Yeah, that's where it would have been. Okay. The docks and whatnot. The There's no docks in the, that. The docks aren't in the shellfish committee. That would be under Pine Street Landing. Bill. 
John, uh, Justin, you have Justin, right? And he also helps EMS, is that right? Eric, so you have anybody else in your department that maybe can work at Public Works on a snowstorm if they're not on the PD? Or? Uh, every is there anybody in your department that has other talents? Oh, they have other talents, but they're, they're working a lot. I don't think they'd want to take on anything else. They all have second jobs. None of them want to make the town of public works or someone else a second job. Not that I'm aware of. Plow on front of the cruise right now. Huh? Plow on the front of the yeah. <laughs> Kill two birds with one stone. Any questions? Questions yeah. for John? John, you had a question for John? Well, I just looking at you say your revenue for the shellfish is thirty thousand two seventy three, but you're budgeting to spend more than that but so it's not all fully, fully funded well no it, it should be if that's is that out of balance because it should be 31385 31, and then your, your so initial proposal and your revenue is 3273 so that those two numbers should match and it's just a matter of the license fee because they raised the license fee increase fees. the license fees yeah, yeah. yeah. have a raise and that was one of the questions that when this was prepared we didn't have the increase so we'll make sure that it's fixed. No you're not crazy. That's good. Got any, questions? any questions for John? My door is always open too so got questions swing in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Chief Booker, EMS. Working on a few different sheets here, so bear with me on that. Where do you want to start with your operating? No, yep. I'm working on my, my big spreadsheet um, and a book. You're good. <laughs> so, Whatever you want to right. do. So uh, before I get too carried away in the budget stuff, I just wanted to say that uh, on the record, this, this group that we have working for us now is fantastic. They're very active, very dedicated to the profession. Um, it's, it's really fun to, to watch them work and, and be a part of it. So now we can dive into the nitty gritty. So, <clears throat> Looking at the budget operationally, some of the bigger increases I'll draw your attention to right off the bat. Uh, regular employees we've we've hired. We're up to a total of seven full-time employees now, not counting me. Um, so you'll note a, a pretty quick increase just on the payroll side and the benefit side for, for the regular employees. Um, so that so that what happened alternatively is it kind of cut the per diem side a little bit as well. So sort of offset that. Uh, benefits obviously plays a huge role. Um, that, that's a costly endeavor when it comes to hiring full-time employees. So <clears throat> those two things, there's a de decrease to the per diem side and an increase to the regular employee side um, before benefits. That allows us to cover um, you know, more, more uh, effectively than we once did, having people around the clock, um, which also allows us to do more transfers and generate more revenue. So being able to staff members, you know, the full-time employees, they work 40 hours a week, which leads me to my next point. Um, we got a little creative with how we're gonna budget their overtime proposed in fiscal year 24. The full-timers, uh, the very bottom there, it's in, should be 1050 the overtime. There's a flat rate overtime 
line, and then there's a 97668. That is called the 48 hour shift differential. Uh, so that line basically covers those full time employees overtime. Anything over 40, they typically work 40 hours a week. All of them work 224s. Well, one of them works a 22 and a 24, and the others work two 24 hour shifts per week. So that that shift differential covers the entire cost of that um, on top of the employee's base salary. So overtime increased proposed 24 as well, just because we're covering, you know, in, in this fiscal cycle, we're covering a lot with a lot of overtime. Um, allows us to put two ambulances on the road more often than we did. Cover the mutual aid calls that were called for quite regularly um, and, and do transfers as well. So um, I am suspecting a, you know, increase in the overtime. Um, we might be able to cut a little bit, but there's definitely going to be an increase in overtime. And you said mutual aid. <coughs> yes, correct. And that's covered by a con new, new contract. Yeah, right? so when I took over as chief in April, one of my first uh, tasks and goals was to sign mutual aid agreements with uh, Warren and Union. Uh, Union covers Washington as well, and also Appleton and uh, so we, we were getting called there quite regularly. We're called to Warren quite regularly, a total of 222 times last year. This is all calendar year. Um, and so we were charging only for paramedic intercept previously, which means we would just bill them $500 for every time we provided them, gave our paramedic to them. Um, and uh, so in, in those which laid contracts, we decided we were going to charge them $700 for every time we, we provide a full crew, meaning two people go, transport the patient. So we charged the agency, the town, $700 plus we bill the patient's insurance. So that's certainly helped with offsetting costs of operation because it's, it's sort of guaranteed revenue. <laughs> um, you know, even if the Medicare reimbursement and the insurance reimbursement is poor, we're, we're getting some revenue from that call because we're sending them a bill. So um, to date, fiscal year 23, um, between intercepts and, and mutual aid fees, we've we billed out a total of like $64,000. Which we would not um, have gotten before. Which we would not have gotten before, correct. So um, and I guess while we're on the topic of offsetting costs, we'll talk about how we uh, are now billing Jefferson and Friendship as part of an interlocal agreement. Um, just roughly estimated based on a formula using call volume and population. Um, we're looking at sending Jefferson a bill. If this, if this went through with the exact numbers on it right now, 177,269 would be the bill to Jefferson for fiscal year 24. And 124,000 and some change would be the, the bill to Friendship. So you're looking at $300,000 and some change for um, those towns in, as part of an interlocal agreement. So, um, and what did we get from them before? Uh, so, <laughs> want me to ask that question? Yeah. I can ask it because I already know. <laughs> uh, a, a lot less. Uh, Twenty-five you know. from one and two thousand from another, something like that. Yeah. So, and uh, to date, um, they're they're paid up to the best of my knowledge. So, yeah. um, friendship that, has two more quarters today. Yeah. How much of that sixty-four thousand we're going to collect? What we, we build war, are we actually going to get all of it? That is that, so. So that those are mutual aid fees. Those okay. are those are. We, we put some in for insurance. So <coughs> no, so we so, so we so that's separate. So we bill seven hundred dollars to the town of Warren for the and for that's providing collectible. the service. Yep. that's collectible. And then we send a bill to the insurance for the cost of our service, which we increased um, last year um, as part of the select board meeting. We discussed it, and we went up there as well. And so the, that $64,000 and change for fiscal year 23 to date, um, that's just collectible. That's just money that we send them a bill for, and they send us a bill back. That does count intercepts. And so <clears throat> intercepts. 
basically ends up just being the $500. We don't bill the patient's insurance for that. But the response is we provide a full crew, a whole ambulance, two people, and we subsequently transport the patient. We'll send their insurance a bill on top of the $700 bill to the town. And if I can follow on, um, we had a we had some debt to write off. <laughs> yeah. Yes. How 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 are we making on that progress wise? So, I, mean, I don't know what the latest collections. I believe looks like. we were at one seventy hundred seventy two thousand. Yeah, we collected. No, or written outstanding. Off. Oh, written, oh, oh, really? Yeah. Well, so we've done we've, quite a bit. We've come quite a ways on that. Yeah. Um, and and I, uh, I don't quote me on that number. That's the last report that I remember seeing. Okay. Somewhere between January, when we started the budget process, till now. Ju yeah, Julie and I sat down at her office one day, and we were on the phone with Comstar, our billing company, and they they run a a plethora of reports. Some of them are kind of hard to comprehend. So. We're saying like break it down to this and this, and eventually we think we got a report that we liked, and it was right around one hundred seventy-two or three thousand dollar mark. So, okay. so will that be collected within say another twelve months? Or? Uh, so <laughs> it's hard to tell. Um, I think collections is has been a, a positive thing for sure, um, and so that certainly would be the goal. I don't I don't imagine we will collect all of that through collections, um, but there is certainly a uh, it certainly isn't hurting us. That's for sure. Okay, so thank you. Yeah, the same. Yeah. So, is, are these accounts due? Are they all patients that have been transported that haven't paid? That's correct. So we, it, it's either it's either that we build an insurance and they they paid some of what they're going to pay, and then there's some left over, not collectible, or uh, they didn't pay a, a bill at all, didn't have insurance, those types of things. So, so do you have any sense? Years ago, the ambulance didn't charge anyone for service, from my recollection, because we didn't want to hurt people that couldn't pay, basically. So, sorry, my memory is a little dim on this, but I think that was sort of addressed in recent years, but how, how are you dealing with Through collections. Yeah. So how we're addressing that is they they can fill out um, they can fill out a hardship form um, and uh, Walderboro residents Walderboro residents and they can well anybody can fill out a hardship form. We have the option to to write it off if we approve said hardship form, or um, like like for instance Walderboro residents can apply to the Philbrook Fund. Um, typically, that's that's covered. I know Friendship does a similar thing where they can go to the auxiliary and they can ask them as well to to help offset those costs. So, um, you know, if somebody really can't pay their bill, there's also also options for payment plans, those types of things. Um, I know FFR is pretty good about that. You know, if it, if a bill does make it all the way to collections, they can call up and make arrangements with with FFR to pay X number of dollars per month until it's paid off. Uh, it's the first. It's the collections agency. Oh, okay. Yep. What does the uh, collection agency take for a percentage? That's a good question. I have to. Do you know that off the top of your head? Um, the billing company takes four. <laughs> so yeah. that's that's the one I know. I want to say it's twenty. But yeah, I'm they twenty percent. Yeah, yeah, they take a pretty steep. We yeah. I know we did the select board did approve that. Yeah, I'll just throw it. I was thinking it was ten. I, I have a I have a contract in my office. I could pull that number if I had to. But ten is what sticks in my. Then me too. Yeah. That does sound that does sound a little yeah ten. Uh, yeah, we'll have numbers. to look it up. We can look it up. And but it is steeper than the four percent. The next meeting. It is steeper than the four percent that Comstar charges. Yeah. But. Uh, pardon me for asking all these basic questions, sure. but sure. I want to educate myself too. Um, you mentioned intercepts. Yep. Uh, and I know what a transfer is, sure. but I don't know what an intercept yep. is. So um, some agencies, you know, Warren being one of them, they don't always have the ability to staff a paramedic. And we typically have at least one, if not two on. And uh, so if, they, if the call they're on requires paramedic level care, we provide them with a paramedic and we send them a bill based on that. So it allows us, you know, they may not be able to start an IV or give some medicine that, that we can at the paramedic level, so it's better for the patient. 
um, actually more in you know, credit where it's due, they, they, uh, they prepared for this. They, they budgeted to pay us for these types of things because they realized they weren't going to be able to staff paramedics. And, and uh, when Julie and I sat down with them early on in my tenure as chief, they said, we're going to work on some things. They have. You know, sometimes they, they have paramedics on more than they did, but we still have a good system where if there isn't one on duty, Knox County Communication Center knows that. And if it's a certain uh, type of call, a shortness of breath call, a chest pain call, they'll start us automatically from here and we'll go back them up with a paramedic. So. Do we ever pay them for mutual aid? So that's a good, that's a good question. So if they, if they were to return the favor, so to speak, we would. The agreement says that we would, we would bill them, they could bill us and we, the same numbers. And that's the, that's the agreement that we signed. So I'll be honest with you, that hasn't happened since we signed the agreement. Um, we staff two trucks per day. Typically we're able to cover that and, and um, because of a true mutual uh, back and forth between us and CLC and Dan Mascotta, I don't bill them, they don't bill me. Um, they may be over here nine times a year, we, we may be over there nine times a year. So it's a true mutual aid response. So we don't, and typically it doesn't take us out of our coverage area. Most patients in the CLC area go to, go to Miles Hospital in Dan Mascotta so we can drop them off and zip back to town. So um, we don't bill CLC, they don't bill us. But Warren, Union, uh, I sent a bill to Cushing <laughs> last week because we went down there and, and um, we, were, we were called to provide them with a paramedic. Uh, our paramedic went down there and their crew showed up, um, but the patient was in a state where they needed to be transported you know, quickly, so we took the call and I sent them a bill for a paramedic intercept anyway. So, and they were good about it. They said, yeah, we, we understand, so. And I think it's, I mean, I said the, it's, it's, in the past it was, we used to call it mutual aid. Now it really is mutual. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, and it's a credit to the chief that, you know, we were able to work out these, these agreements, um, especially for mutual aid, because you don't, you don't want to say no to a, to a community next door. Mm. And like he explained, with CLC, it really is mutual aid with the, the numbers even out. But when you're doing so many calls one way, it, you really have to charge. And, and uh, the towns that we help, they're appreciative of the service, and they just pay the bill. <laughs> honestly, we, we've had no problem. Cheaper for them, honestly. It, it is. And, and, and the truth is, they, just, they, they really do want to take care of their, their citizens. And so, you know, they're, they're, they're happy to, to have the service. And... Happy to have the backup. So and they have made changes in their own rank and file to be able to respond to their call. So there really are. Yeah, there's certainly positive changes. We yeah. we certainly are, are going over there more now for um, true, you know, second calls. Like you know, Warren may be on a call and we're going over there because it's their second call in their town and they have one truck and we have three, you know. So uh, with two crews typically on. So um, they are making efforts to to. Let us leave our trucks in town, but in the meantime, they're paying for it. So, and, oh, uh, Derek, given the progress you made this year to balance revenues and expenses, what's your guesstimate about what you think the town is going to have to pay in subsidies for your service? Well, certainly going to. This is certainly going to help. I, you know, I don't have the, the exact time. number. You know, and unfortunately, we um, when it comes to EMS billing. We, we sort of leave a lot of money on the table. And, and by that, I mean, we, we charge a, a certain amount plus mileage for the service that we provide. And, um, you know, it, it's, no, it's no secret amongst the masses in, in, in my world that reimbursement to EMS services is, is poor. Mm -hmm. You know, so when we talk about revenues and we talk about anticipating revenue, um, you know, I will, t I will tell you right off the top, you know, if I, if I look at the number in front of me, the two hundred forty-nine thousand dollar increase, which is seventeen point seven six percent, right? Um, in my head, I'm saying, okay, well, I'm sending a three hundred thousand dollar bill between Jefferson and Friendship. You know, so that certainly helps offset you know, the the cost of the operating budget. But again, uh, I, I need to be very clear to you guys as a select board and budget committee, um, Medicare reimbursement is not great <laughs> you know I couldn't tell you an exact percentage on on return but it's it's not good and there's a lot of 
um, talk and um, you know door knocking in the in the the political world to try to change those things. But it's not something that we should prepare for in our budgets. We should be we should anticipate what we can, and we do so kind of mildly. Um, in the event that those that those reimbursements don't increase, so. Thank you. Yeah. Our revenue is conservative. But you know, when I, when when you think about what is sort of guaranteed in revenue, it is those mutual aid fees, and um, you know, the town of Jefferson and, and Friendship, they they've signed a neutral agreement, and you were with me at one of those meetings, and it's it's just one of those things where um, we did a lot of talking and and uh, a lot of back and forth, and, and it's good that they're going to um, you know kind of pony up and, and they want the service so uh, so all good I'll move ahead <laughs> so, get, go ahead so on the revenue side of the budget on page 60 1.1 million dollars 1.167 million dollars line item breakdown of that well there is right here in front of me yep so we we um we sort of do it based on 901 calls versus transfers versus um intercepts and mutual aid and so um you know we 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 do an estimate of of our previous year you know um so what i can give you having run numbers today um fiscal year 23, two days, so it's July 1, 22 through today, um, you know, we we would have, between mutual aid and all of this, um, you know, we, we're looking at billing $809,000 before mileage. Um, again, how much of that comes back to us? Julie and I looked at revenues a month and a half ago and we were very much on par to exceed the fiscal year 23 expectation but to answer your question it is broken down by number of 911 calls um, ALS and BLS combined and then BLS and ALS transfers specialty care transfers and PIFs because they're all billed a little differently so since we don't have that breakdown in front of us yep. are there any line items in that that you subline items that you feel might be adjusted at all. I mean, we're looking for adjustments in expenditures, but um, have your expectations uh, evolved any since you submitted the budget? Basis? No. <laughs> like I said, I think we I think we tend to uh, anticipate revenue conservatively, no. just in the event that something. You know, we all of a sudden, you know, call volume decreases. I mean, when COVID hit, call volume decreased dramatically. You know, um, so this is based on on all sorts of estimates of number of calls for government service. Shut down. Government, yeah, and, and government shut down. Our, we don't, we're not going to get our Medicare payment. Right. So timely matter. So I. Oh. So I think it's easier to just stick with <laughs> kind of what we Same. anticipate and and not increase the revenue. Um, anticipation to, to try to offset anything else just because it's there what we what we know is is real is is like I said the mutual aid fees and the intercept fees and the, the bills to the towns that we cover as part of our initial local agreement we know that's there we don't know everything else is kind of predictable part it, of uh, not revenue, predictable part of the revenue calculations and, and just I, I should mention this I, I did this the first night when Derek and I sat down well, when he gave me his budget and then I did the budget, we were within $2,000 of each other in expenditures. And we were, I think, within $300 of each other in revenue. Yeah, it was pretty close. <laughs> it was pretty close. How he does it and how I do it are two different ways. So, so we, at least in my, and I, he does it, it might turn out a little differently, but I also, in our calculation, when Peg and I are doing the budget, it's a 22.4% um, guess that that's what's going to be uncollectible. 
So it's a we, we base that, I think it's a 22.4%. That number seems to stick in my head. But we do have a percentage where we're considering that these could be an uncollectible amount of what we predict to bill based on our prior year's calls. Now that is broken down on the in the budget. So yep. since we're talking about revenue, since you've been fully staffed for the most part, transfers have those yep. gone so, up, so we're on which creates revenue. So using fiscal year twenty three has a reference. We're on par to be up like thirty transfers over last year, which may not seem like a whole lot, but what's that um, equate into? Revenue? So if you do some just some rough math, if I if I build that, I had it written down here. Somewhere. Excuse me. It's like fifty six thousand dollars if we just build it like, you know, at the basic level with like. 40 miles. So I have, a, I have it written down somewhere. I'll, I'll hunt it down. But it's, no, just, it's a significant so it increase. Is, so it does. The, it does. And, having and, a full staff is having a full revenue. 100 percent. There's there's no there's no doubt about that. So and again, um, some of that is. So if you take Penn Bay for example, um, you know they're using Northeast and North Star now, um, sort of primarily has their transfer services. And because when everybody was so shorthanded, we weren't able to cover those transfers out of there. So they had to do Maine Health had to do something to, to try to cover those those movement of those patients. So Northeast and North Star are providing most of those services. We do back them up during the day some. Um, and uh, if something's critical, we, we try to help out if we can. Um, and at night we take we take our residents. Um, you know if they call us and say hey. A wall of resident needs to be transferred to Maine Med or, or Bangor. We, we we make that happen, but we're not getting the first call to Penn Bay because of Northeast and North Star. But Miles keeps us plenty busy, so uh, we certainly are uh, are covering our transfers better than we were. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, just to to follow up, I think it's important for us to recognize that assuming we're getting everything we deserve from the folks we help out, yeah. Jefferson. Yes. Yeah. And so forth. Between revenues and ex operating expenses, we still have a half a million dollar difference that you know, that we're covering, right. and we're covering it because we think it's necessary to protect our citizens. Yeah. And it's just important, I think, to recognize that, that this this is a, an essential service. It comes at a cost, and it's a cost I think we're willing to pay. I'm pretty proud of it too. So yeah, well, you have every right to do. I just want to point out too that in those agreements with Friendship and Jefferson is that not only is there you know there's some shared revenue, there's shared revenue, but there's also the shared liability thing, and, and that was a key piece in when we negotiated these contracts is that it had to share. Everybody likes to talk about the revenue and share it, but that liability it also had to be shared. So. So if you're not getting paid back for a Jefferson resident, Jefferson's making a difference. They're responsible for that part so, of it, yeah. So a, a, percentage, a percentage of the overall. A percentage yeah. of yeah. the overall yeah. that yeah. isn't paid. Yeah. So so if you if you look at the quick numbers, Jefferson's responsible for like eighteen point six seven of everything of our okay. of our expenditures. And so friendships are like thirteen point one. Um, and we're like sixty eight Point two something along those lines. That's the, and that was that came at some discussion. You know, what is the best way? What is the fairest way to, to do this? And and you know, we decided that we would take a a reliable census to the best of our ability. I mean, we were even in here one day with Max trying to break down the map of our two thirds coverage area versus CLC's one third based on their population. And we said, look, we're just going to bill them based on their overall population because we can't break down. Where people live and where they don't live, and, and so, um, and then the call volume for the last three years, on average. So there are about 170 calls a year. So, um, well, I'm talking about increases, bouncing back a little bit. Um, we talked about overtime and the and the eight-hour. 48 hour shift diff line. Um, I 
So one of the one of the bigger increases you'll see in the operating side is forty-eight thousand dollar increase to the equipment and maintenance side. That would be on page seventeen. Seventeen. So we decided to move stretchers from capital to the oh, operating side. Excuse me, not stretchers. Well, ultimately stretchers, but right now we have Lucas devices. <coughs> They're the automated CPR machine. Um, we only had one. Uh, we decided that probably wasn't the best thing for us to have just one that we had to grab off the table out in the bay and take with us. So we, we were able to lease through Stryker um, two more of them so that every truck has an automated CPR machine on it. Um, and uh, in discussion with Julie, I, I was urgently trying to replace some aging monitors and we were able to attach that those to the existing lease and lease those as well. So basically, and so more recently, um, we were able to add a power load um, system to our ambulance is going to be here the longest. So 94, it's a, it's a 2019 Ford uh, Demers and um, we were able to add to that lease another basically $78,000 worth of equipment um, and we'll make an annual payment on that once a year for 48 grand that pays for that power load and a brand new stretcher, the three Lucas devices and the three new or the two Lucas devices and three new monitors. So it's an annual payment to keep all the trucks outfitted and, and with the highest equipment. The power load system is an absolute game changer to EMS. Um, it enables us to basically lift, I, I have to show it to you, it's kind of hard to explain, but it hooks into the truck, you, 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 you push one button and it lifts up using two arms and and uh, picks the stretcher right up and slides in the back of the ambulance. So basically you can load people with one finger, <laughs> in theory, once they're on the stretcher. Um, so it's it's designed to save backs and keep people working in the industry longer. And again, and so this came up because we were looking at replacing um, stretchers. I have one of the oldest stretchers in the state it actively in duty right now uh, on that truck. So I said, well, why don't we just you know, kind of see if we can add it to that existing lease. They were able to do that. So, it, you know, if this goes through, basically it's an annual payment for five years for $48,000. And we, we basically either replace that equipment for new or we um, trade it in for something newer, like a newer model. Or we keep it for, you know, buy it for a dollar and, and keep it. So um, that's an increase to the budget for sure. Um, it is on the <coughs> operating side. That enabled us to open the discussion about taking stretchers out of capital and basically uh, ordering stretchers uh, with the replacement of a truck. So moving forward, the truck we have on order right now has that power load system and will come with a brand new stretcher as well. And moving forward, we'll just budget um, to replace the truck with a stretcher and a power load. So, so when the, won't have to rent Correct. That. So when the stretcher and the power load goes out with the truck, a new one comes in. It's all part of the budgeted costs of the ambulance versus budgeting for stretchers separately. And, and to add to what you're saying, I remember the discussion we had about the leasing arrangement. I mean, it's a fact that this equipment is like state of the renewed. Art. It's state of the art. It changes every couple of years. And it does. so if you own it, yeah. in a couple of years, you own an old piece of equipment. Right. And if something goes wrong with it, yeah. they, they don't maintain it for you. Right. For the new budget committee members, before we went to this model with the leasing, um, we did include the former, all the members of the former budget committee into this discussion, we actually had a special meeting and talked about the heart monitors and the Lucas devices. They were they were fairly urgent pieces of equipment to uh, discuss replacing. They just had some age on them. And so, um, you know, I, I certainly don't want to be in a situation where I put a monitor on somebody it doesn't work. <laughs> so we, <coughs> we uh, and unfortunately, because of the way things are, much to John's point about cars and whatnot, we're still waiting for those monitors to show up. 
Um, still waiting the, for your ambulance. <laughs> still waiting for the ambulance. Oh, <laughs> yeah, and we yeah we will be yeah. So the ambulance is on order, and and but we are still waiting for those those monitors to show up, and we don't pay a dime of this until everything shows up. So, you know, um, it is very much my thought that this this dollar amount will be in the in the 2024 budget cycle, uh, the $48,000 to have to pay to Stryker to lease that equipment. They come in, and they come and service it. So that's another thing too. Um, that that number covers all of the service. They come and service it. We used to have to budget for that separately. Now we don't. We just budget as part of that number. They come and service it. Um, something breaks. They something it. breaks. They replace it. Um, preventative maintenance is done every so often on stretchers and monitors and Lucas devices and and every power load systems and everything. So um, that covers all of that. So they have a three line item. My yeah, you just here's the number. Go. This covers the service for it. Simple. So it's a very simple. It's an increase for sure, but it's a very simple math, uh, you know, you know, thing to, to look at and say, okay, we're covering all of that for this. And we have to just remember that that well, there was normally like between twelve or twenty thousand dollars in capital that you used to see every year. That's gone. That's gone, and now it's moved over to operating. So I just want to remind everybody of that. So in the past, I'm sure I was getting at is say it again. So in the past, we were we were figuring twelve thousand dollars a year for stretchers, another six okay. for um, heart monitors. Heart is, yeah. So it was normally, yeah, I guess it was eighteen to twenty that would regularly be shown in the big sheet of vow um, that we were budgeting for those line items. So that that number then comes out and it goes into the the um, operating budget operating budget so although it looks like it's a, a huge increase it's a little less because that's something we were accounting for previously in the capital fund and unfortunately this this these pieces of equipment have just gone up like everything else significantly so really really it was it was a matter of let's just get them on a lease do the math that way figure out what the annual payments gonna be pay the annual payment out of operating and then leave capital to replacing trucks which will then come with a power load and stretcher, so we no longer budget for the stretcher and capital. Just budget for the truck, which includes the stretcher. So this forty-eight thousand last year would have been twenty something thousand. Eighteen to twenty. Cost increase of stretches and stuff for oh, and a power load system. How, how much does the power load system so the, cost? The, so the power load system is um, upwards of like forty grand once it's installed, and the stretchers like the stretchers have gone up crazy. When when I talked to our striker rep, you know he he uh, he told me what the cost of just a stretcher would be. And it just—I was like twenty-three or four thousand dollars, and a, you know, even more than that for the for the high-end one, you know, um, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. From they were, you know, seventeen, sixteen, seventeen, two years ago, three years ago. Forty thousand for that power load. Yeah. Put its forklift in the back of the truck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, we can lease a forklift if you want. Like, that's the fall us around all the calls, though. So. So, so, what's the lifespan of a power load? Like the life of an ambulance? Yep. Should yep. So they, so anything medical, they're going to tell you seven years. If you talk to a striker rep or you talk to me, I'm going to tell you ten, which is the life of a truck. And that's what usually we typically budget for, isn't it? Correct. Like ten, ten years. years yep. Truck. Yeah. So when I talk to the striker rep, you know he's doing his job. He's saying, hey, seven. You know, we're saying, well, we're going to milk it a little longer. You know, in that way, the whole. The whole thing goes out the door, and a whole new one comes in. And that's a reasonable expectation. Yes. Yep. I don't. I don't. I mean, this the stretcher I have in service. That's one of the oldest in the state. Is from 2006, and quite frankly, it still works really well. Um, you know, it's it. They're not going to be able to get parts for it and that type of stuff. If something drastic happens, which is the scary part of the whole thing, but um, it is still functioning very well. Our crew takes very good care of the equipment here, so you know it's cleaned. It's it's maintenance. So. 
I remember when I started my career, the first stretcher I bought was $5,500, and everybody thought that was a lot of money. But I'm really old, so. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a reasonable expectation to think they'll last 10 years. You know, um, pretty safe bet. Do we get any discount on workers' comp for having a power load or anything? Like that? <laughs> they love all that. Anything you can do, yeah, they love it. Does it actually save us any money there? It, you know, we are we are now participating in a safety program that Peg has spearheaded, and I have a feeling that there's uh, they will probably raise that to the. When we have our safety inspection and say, "Look what we're doing. We're putting these in our ambulances," and it might it might make a difference. I don't know. We so lift injuries are like the number one in EMS across the country, yeah. and so anything you could do to mitigate that is, I think, worthwhile. One one lift accident where nothing, where it's just a minor injury, is going to cost five thousand dollars. Just 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 reporting a, like a report only claim. That's the value of five thousand dollars on a workers' comp. But if you start talking claim. about surgeries and that sort of stuff, I mean, one back or, injury, or just right. time out, or so. Let's not talk about this. this. Right. Let's, yeah. Not not but, but you know that that is the that is the the this is becoming the industry standard in EMS. This power load system, you know, um, and and again, the the golden ticket is to order new trucks <laughs> and budget for it as part of the purchase of a, of, a, of an apparatus. But and then we wouldn't have to lease them. Correct. So moving forward, we will, we will pay for this one power load as part of this lease, and then when that's done in five years, we won't lease any more power loads. We'll just buy them as part of the truck. Um, so the truck will, when, when the power load gets in, they, you know, it, it was it was 10, 11 weeks out a week ago. So it's going to be a little bit anyways. The truck will go to Bangor for a couple days. They'll install it. It'll be back here. We'll do training with our crew, and then it'll be in service, saving backs. So, power load salesman. That's right. Looking for a new job. Yeah. I like my job pretty well. Yeah. So, but yeah. So that's one of the bigger increases. Just you know to discuss um, some of the other stuff. Tr training was one. Um, Just more people to train. You know, the, the cost of sending people anywhere is, you know, is going up. We 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 require people to maintain certain, um, you know, competencies and and we call them alphabet soup classes. They're they're ACLS, PALS, PHTLS, and they they cost money. Um, so. So none of those those initials meant anything to anybody. Anybody? Yeah. So. Um, it's it's basically just it's it's like paramedics are required to have ACLS and PALS. It's it's um, advanced cardiovascular life support. It allows us to give those medicines to to shock those life threatening rhythms, those types of things. I can get way so into. So when it. you're stopping somebody's heart, you need that class to be able to stop and restart somebody's heart. Correct. <laughs> yes. And 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 so there's just more staff. Um, the cost has gone up just in general. When I when I was thinking about cutting things I did go back to that line and and uh, I certainly would cut a thousand dollars right there I, I think I could safely do that oh uh, yeah uh, so training so it's 2070 yeah 2070 went from 5980 to, to 10980 I would go back gladly to, to 9980 or, or 9000 if that was was easier and, I was telling um, somebody earlier that we, we have an association that's not particularly active right now. Um, there, there is some money in there, and I think there's some there's some thought amongst the, the crews that they would like to see that more active. And and um, the initial discussion around the association was to help offset the cost of training. Um, so I don't want to make any promises that that's going to um, kind of come to fruition anytime immediately, but I. I could say if we found ourselves in a bind, I think we could probably work something out where where um, they could help cover some costs of training as well. So line twenty seven, you taking a thousand dollars? Thousand dollars, yep. Well, and you could also like everyone sit around and watch YouTube videos. You can learn all kinds of things. Out. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I'm yeah, not that, calling you. That's <laughs> that's, that's one way. When the ambulance comes to me, I don't want them going on YouTube. What's your, what's your Wi-Fi password so I can watch? So um, going back up a little bit on that same 
area 2020 is uniforms. Um, just because we have so many full-time people now, um, that's gone up a little bit. Um, went from 2100 to 4080. That covers the cost of pants and that sort of stuff for our full-time employees. Your uniform looks pretty sharp. Oh, thanks. <laughs> this is this is the dress-up one. Yeah. So typically our cr crews during the day, they wear polos. Um, you see seen around town probably. They're just a polo. Um, and uh, during the week, during the nights and weekends, they can wear a T-shirt that says Wall of Remus on it, front and back. So they better look sharp when they're out there riding around in the ambulances. So what's that? Yeah, casual Fridays. Yeah, no. No. He's, just, he's not a casual. I'm not a cat. Yeah. That. No. No. <laughs> um. So, what we're talking about cuts. I wanted to go back to the payroll page. There's a, on the regular employees. So 1020. There's a raise in there. Fiscal year 24 for the director. That would be me, the service chief, and um, I certainly would be willing to give that back to the town. I don't, I don't foresee raises for our crews this year, so I certainly am not going to take one if they're not going to get one. So, where, what, where is that? I I don't see it's it. ten twenty. It's ten twenty. It's, it's in, it's in with all regular okay. employees. Okay. So it's, so, so it would go from eighty zero eighty. Well, that, they have a total. They don't, they don't have a total. total. Okay, so yeah. it, it, it would be roughly forty-five eighty. Just right off the top. There. Yeah, yeah. You just yeah. Eighty zero eighty. Well, no, it's yeah. you, no. you guys can't write it down because he's right. looking at something that's itemized. Yeah, this is itemized. Oh. He's talking Anyways, his salary he's only. Yeah, talking right. his oh, salary. My personal right. salary. Yep. And yep. I yep. just want to point out, and I'm going to say this about salaries when you start doing salaries we get further behind so god forbid and i say this about any of the department heads somebody gets run over i say it all the time about myself i get run over by a bus and you have to replace that person there is a there is a cost to replacing that person so i i just want to throw that out there before we start talking about that because that person can say that, and then you have to rehire for that position, and you're behind the eight ball. So just keep that in mind. Oh, come on. What, what would be, apart from your itemized figure, you've proposed a, a cut uh, or not implementing a raise for you and your chief? What is that? What would that total? So. I, I'd like to have a conversation with, with Derek about that. Okay. But I also want to point out that last year EMS got a significant, their, their, their crews, their per diem and their regular staff got a significant increase. But that was to keep them in the market. I mean, we couldn't yeah. hire people. Right. Mm -hmm. I just, but I just, I don't want it to make it sound like because when this plays out to the general public, I, I don't want them to think that we're not giving, we made a, a significant wage adjustment last year. Right, $10 an hour, $10 an hour rate. So I just, I, I just want to make sure. That was good. after having a few years of trying to be creative. Correct. Correct. To keep staffing. Correct. So Derek, on Derek's behalf, he tried different things get his people up to it, you know, what worked. So what did you budget, budget in for you, Derek? I don't budget, I don't do my, I don't budget for me. But there was a number, you said 85 or 84? You have to take it up with Julie, apparently. So. <laughs> it's, a per, it's a personnel matter. Is it anyway. possible yeah. so, next so, meeting? So, I, I wanted, so, salaries, uh, so this is what I would so, like to so, do, guys. So. Time, 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 everybody time. Personnel matters are executive session, yep. and I really want to get away from talking about specific people. <laughs> I think it's great that well, you would like to. So, so my, my point is to open up the can of worms because we were asked to look at places where we would right. be willing to make cuts. Much to, much like Chief Lash did, I'm just trying to. <coughs> understand, but and we have to respect the fact that we're talking about individuals and salaries, so we just, just need to. Just mine. <laughs> take time. Yes. 
Built. The Fireman Head aren't in the contract, correct? They are not in the contract. So we, Neither is EMS. So the next meeting, we could get the numbers on what his salary is Every, and I have what, no his, what his proposed raise would be. Right. Correct. <clears throat> and then we could sit around and say, okay, he's nice enough to give a, it all back. We could sit here and say, well, let's give him maybe half of it. But we can have that discussion later. Right, but we got to have that number. We got to know what is right. And what I would just say is that we have to. I, th I think we should have that discussion if we're going to talk about that kind of stuff. I think that should be in executive. I can give you those numbers, yeah. but again, <clears throat> with those numbers should also come what the equivalents are paid in other places. So. You know, I don't mind having that discussion. I just would prefer to do it in executive. Equivalent so. based on run calls or equivalent based on occupation. Occupation. Um, I would say both. That's how we typically look at okay. it. Is run uh, both would be good. A number of and it's not even call and volume. It's the number of people you're managing. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I mean, and that's. I think that's one of the places where Waldeboro has Waldeboro for many years operated like it's a it's a, a little town. And it's a wonderful little town that provides the same amount of services that you would see in a much bigger community. So we feel like we're a small town, but when you realize that he's running a department that has how many how many employees? Any, at any given time? 35. 35. You know, it's, so you've got to compare that to. But we need to see those numbers. You should. <coughs> Isn't it? No, I think it's bigger there to offer that up. But, you know, good to <clears throat> there. I remember several years ago, somebody on this committee asked um, John Daigle, you know, do, do we need, you know, I don't know what it was, 10 tons of sand or whatever. Right. And his response was, no, I don't. You know, which roads would you not oh, like me sure. to yeah. sand, right? And, you know, if anybody rides with these guys or with the police or with uh, the fire department, you know, they all, none of them, um, you know, make what they should. So I, for me, that's a non-negotiable trying to cut, you know, anybody's pay. And I think that's why we need that number, honestly. Because if it's insignificant amount, then I don't see why we need to cut it. Well, I, I just think, too, that, you know, when we brought Derek in, it's he, he's got a year now under his belt. This is his first full year, coming up April 1st. Is it April 1st? April 1, yep. April 1. So I, I just think that this is a discussion that we need to have in the executive. I guess I guess my point is I'm, I'm willing to have You're the discussion. You're willing to have yes. the discussion. Correct. Thank you. So moving on, uh, um, so over time, because we have that 48-hour shift differential, I think we could look at cutting some money there as well. Um, You're talking out of the uh, 148, 389. That would be the that would be the total. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So about so about 10 grand, probably would would. I wouldn't want to touch the, the shift differential one. Again, I understand you guys have a total in front of you, and I have a detail in front of me, but um, the 40-hour shift differential we'd want to leave alone, but the 5721, which is just the overtime, we could probably cut 10 grand from there. And you're comfortable with that, though? Yeah, mostly, I think, <laughs> so far. <laughs> so if you said 10 and we came back and said we'll take five out of it, you'd be happy. That's what the budget committee, the select board wants to do. So, if you wanted to open up the, the big one and talk about capital, I, I really, um, I really don't think I want to take anything from capital. Again, that's a truck. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, open that discussion up again. That's a, that's an ambulance. We have one on order. Um, so the $200,000 in capital, if you'll recall, when we had the discussion about replacing the truck, we had a special select board. Yeah. Um, Prices went crazy. 
select board and budget committee meeting over the summer, last summer. Um, we took the money we had already saved and then we agreed to put this $200,000 in the capital budget. So we kind of already voted on this once. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's just did. a refresher <laughs> that, you know, had we waited the, the cost and we'd still be waiting, you know, we're already, we've already waited a year almost for this and it's no closer that I'm aware of to being coming to fruition. So, and so, you know, we're going to have this, I, I think for a while, at least in emergency services, this backlog and then the longer you wait, the more it costs. So you end up, I think it was mentioned earlier, you end up with increasing maintenance fees. I mean, we're already, our maintenance line is, has gone up as well in this budget, this proposed budget, to help cover the cost of an aging fleet. You know, um, some things were kind of come up unexpected. You know, somebody might drive a truck to miles and say, hey, chief, you know, it, it pulls pretty hard to the right, you know, and uh, you just got to fix it. You, you can't, you can't allow it to just pull to the right. You got to do tires and pads and rotors and, you know, the truth is you got several different people driving these things. Um, you know, uh, and they have different driving habits, and we do everything we can to make sure that, that they're safe when they're operating the ambulances. And so because of that, I don't mess around with stuff. I, I tend to, if it needs tires, it gets tires. If it needs brakes, it gets brakes, you know, those types of things. So because everything is going up in cost, and, and hopefully um, with the addition of the public works mechanic, that will help us sort of offset some of those costs. But we're still going to have to take care of an aging fleet, you know, um, the truck we're replacing is from 2014. We should be replacing one in 2025. We wouldn't see it until 2027 if we ordered it then. So um, the fleet's getting older. So where do we stand with this ambulance that we're replacing now? We, we bought the truck chassis. No. So 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 the the chassis. We didn't go that route. The chassis and the they. the <laughs> The chassis and the I think I think Marcus has some of those. The um, the chassis and the conversion box, which is the patient compartment, is all in order. Um, OEM is the company that says when the chassis are going to kind of come into the flow, and they've told AEV, um, the company that we're buying the truck through. You, you'll see the chassis in 2024, at which point they'll just build the truck. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they're ready to build a conversion box. Right? They're just waiting on a chassis. Um, you know, and, and if that truck shows up, truck, ambulance, if that ambulance shows up in 2024, we would be right on par um, for that truck's replacement. It would be 10 years. So uh, how much have we paid for so far? We haven't paid a dime for it yet. Okay. We won't pay a dime for it until we take delivery. So we have uh, with 102 in the account now and 200 more. And what's what's the balance on that? Is it 400? So so just you guys have to remember when you're looking at that, which is why I hesitate to put stuff in like this. <laughs> well, we want to understand. It. Well, I understand, but then it gets it gets hairy. Mm -hmm. This is a balance at 6302023. So that's a future balance. So this might not be the up-to-date balance. So I wouldn't worry about the balance that's in there as much. It's a guide. But the overall cost of the ambulance is covered between what is existing in there and the $200,000. So the $200,000 will fully fund that. The $200,000 is what has to be fully funded in this budget, which is essentially something you guys already discussed right. thoroughly right. at the meeting yeah. last year that you're just putting your rubber stamp on because we said, well, we will we'll let you order it, but we have to remember, we have to put that money in the capital Can't pay for it. in this year's budget. So this is because everything went haywire in the purchasing of much like police cars, ambulances. Right. Basically, typically what would happen is we wouldn't even have had that discussion when I took over as, as chief in April of 2022, we wouldn't have opened up the discussion until this year, this year because we can replace the truck in nine months versus 24, 18, 24 months. The 
200,000 will fully fund the 200, that. The 200,000, this is what we had discussed when we had our meeting prior was. This was the number decided to, to be put in to there. To put into this budget to fully fund the purchase of the ambulance. We had XYZ saved, and then we have this to put into. So when it comes to the 2024 budget discussion, like Julie said, that number has kind of already been <laughs> discussed and Right. And but we don't really have a choice because we ordered it, which is yeah. why Try. we had the special meeting between the select board and the... the and in, in discussion with AEV, that truck is still on schedule to show up in 2024. So here's hoping. So time to move on. <laughs> right? I mean, the discussion's done with trucks. And police cars, too. So just looking ahead... The next two years, we're going to be funding another ambulance, yes. the 2015 Chevy there. So that will fully fund that vehicle as well. So we'd be buying it. You, you got to order that now. Well, <laughs> that's a discussion for soon. <laughs> that's a discussion to, for, to, yeah, to, at yeah, some yeah. point it's a yeah. discussion for soon. It's, and that you're going to have the same discussion with fire trucks. It's yeah. just going to be the same... Just to, just to keep us on, on track so that we don't run into that, the trucks are incredibly old and they're breaking down <laughs> because it's going to cost money too. <laughs> you know yeah. I mean? and, so. I, and I think it's particularly with EMS, it's the daily drive yep. on that. And it's the same thing with the police. It's just it's a daily, yep. daily drive. So what's your outlook on when we have to pull the trigger on, on that one and actually commit to spending the money. Well, pull up a chair. Talk right now. No, I'm just kidding. It, it no, needs to be soon. Realistically, if we want to stay, if we, if it, year. yeah, yeah. <laughs> if we want to stay on track, you know, it, it, and much, much like the police chief said, I, you know, I, I, I can make things work. I can change the rotation. We rotate the trucks monthly. They have different roles. One role is busier than the other. Um, I can rotate them a little differently so that we can try to milk another year out of them but i'll just be frank I, these trucks are they they get beat up on you know they they occasionally end up in a ditch on storm mountain road so it just you know that just is what it is you know and and, and but they weren't over no they weren't on their side credit credit to our drivers credit that, to the that driver. person did a good job so mm -hmm. but yeah so anyways and that was in the middle of a storm i just want everybody to understand that was in the middle of a very bad snowstorm it was not just driving down but again, they they're just they're they're going to age and they're going to age quickly, <laughs> you know. And, but again, um, you know, if it, if if it is the the feeling of the budget committee and select board, we'll we'll milk them a little longer if we have to. And to be honest with you, Bob mentioned earlier we we could order a truck and we might not see it <laughs> on the schedule that we'd like to. So that's why these conversations are. That's why immediately the conversation for this 2024 truck took place and special meetings happened and <laughs> those numbers were because right. we got to deal with reality yeah. yeah and that's just the ugly reality of it now covid didn't help us there so so there's just because somebody will ask this question we are at three we have three ambulances correct yep. Supply the supply line is is up um, a total of ten thousand dollars. That's a pretty quick estimate, and that's there's really no, there's really no changing that. Consumable materials have just gone up. Right. There was also a big change when we used to get our supplies at the hospital. We still get some supplies at the hospital. Okay. Yep, and they and they they bill us. You know, they, they send us an invoice every month. We we get a lot from them. Uh, I don't I don't know. We get a little bit of a deal. I, I don't know how much that deal is. The, the the big thing for us is convenience. You know, we can swing by and, and grab a box of IVs from the Miles Supply and on Route One there, Mascotta. You know, versus having to wait two days for it if you're out. You know, so. But the uh, the the consumable material stuff has just gone up. We lock in with diesel anyways, right? So, yeah. uh, a lot of the <coughs> just, kind of just kind of bulk, right? Yeah. A lot of the some of this is probably covered by charging the patient as well. Correct? Yeah, so we don't we don't bill like a hospital, you know you know what I mean? But but oh, right. but, but the thought process is that what we are billing for our service helps cover 
and offset the cost of our consumable materials. That goes into my my math when I'm when I'm doing it. So, I mean, we went up we went up on our mileage, three dollars and fifty cents last time we upped the prices in in June of twenty two. That was cheap for a couple months. I said we gotta we gotta bump these numbers up, and we did. And um, I think it's helped. You know, I'm, you know what I'm saying just because you're trying to offset the increase of costs and, and fuel and that sort of stuff. So. Under the vehicle maintenance, uh, John had mentioned that with the public works that there could be some repair and maintenance done on um, all of the vehicles. Um, looking at your year to date of where you're at, that's primarily outsourced with other vendor that you have Correct. currently using. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we don't, we have. Um, <coughs> Our trucks certainly don't really qualify for warranty at this point, <laughs> you know. So. I see that based on the year. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Very yeah. old. Yeah. Yeah. They're they're good for ten years, you know. Right. A couple hundred thousand miles. So if if they are doing the work at Public Works, they'll still be billing somehow, right? Correct. They're going to so, be doing an internal billing. Correct. So they'll they'll get charged the actual personnel <laughs> cost. And then just for the um, supply parts, tools, right. parts to fix it. Right. But they won't be charged the overhead. It, it, <clears throat> when John worked on the numbers, um, he was figuring that his department would could potentially have a revenue source of about thirty thousand dollars, which means these departments would save about thirty thousand dollars. Right. In vehicle maintenance. Right. And one of the big things with that is the cost of the parts. Right. Right now, when we're having the trucks, we pay retail right. Right. on all the parts. Right. By going and doing it this way, we get them at the wholesale. Right. Right. So one that's of the, one of the Yeah, true. And one of the biggest things when it comes to like ambulances and, and fire apparatus, you're going to be able to lift them. You know that becomes a, that becomes a thing. So Big lift, yeah. that you know that room and, and money and that sort of stuff. But that's that's Johnny's world and. We're just gonna let him figure that out. He's, he's <laughs> so. got. He, he just the, yeah. actually just last week he met with the rep for um, who they're thinking about getting the lift, the tire changer, and there was something else I can't remember that needed to be potentially the purchased. Mounting balance, the wheel balance. balancer, right? Except yeah. wheel balancer to one thing to note about uh, ambulances, the the trucks and the fleet. We have one truck. Uh, one pickup truck chassis, two others are vans. And because we're going to stick with diesel, we have to buy trucks. They no longer make the diesel. And so my point to that is they're heavier. You know, the truck the truck that we have, um, the Ford, that we're putting the power load in, which will, will increase the rate, the weight of it a little bit, but it's 14,100 pounds per the town transfer station scale. Because Johnny said, take that truck up there and weigh it, because I want to know how much it's going to weigh when it comes to lifting it. So um, they're heavy; they're just heavier. So, so you're going to get, you're going to have a savings because you'll get the retail on tires and filters. <coughs> That's the thought process. And yeah. the labor rate. Wholesale, 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 Instead of the markup, twenty percent or whatever they do no on parts, yeah. some of it's double. Yeah. yeah, some yeah. of it's double. Yep. So there should be a savings there. Everything <clears throat> goes as planned. So, would you ever take it out yet? I don't know. I don't know when that's gonna. <laughs> John, yeah, John was very hesitant to commit yeah. that it would affect this year's right. budget significantly. Right. But I think he's going to be coming back in to see you again, so we can talk to him about that. So it looks like your actual vehicle maintenance costs have been pretty consistent the last mm -hmm. couple of years, looking at your year to date, and then the 2022. So you have your you have your the year to date in front of you. I I, I don't so. <laughs> Fifteen nine. 
that's yeah. February. That's a February. February and, number. Yeah, just bear in mind when you're looking at your to date, that only that's, goes up to yeah, I know, I know, February. That's, that's why I was looking at today. Is it? No, that's, right, it's, that's in line with last the, the previous one, which was 22,500. 22, Have there been any significant uh, repair issues that are anomalies, or is it just they all um, add up to? No, not not really yet. Uh, um, you know, I, I certainly foresee them. You know, um, we had the box issue. We had the we had the yeah we had so we, had, we and we've had so yeah to Julie's point I, I had a, a, a had a box that leaked. I had a truck that was riding really poorly. We had to put some different tires on it. They had to do run a series of tests on it to diagnose the problem. That was a pretty significant cost that certainly we didn't budget for. It seems to have fixed the problem, which is which is good. But it was going to chew tires up. It was going to burn brakes up, and so we had to kind of take a step back. It spent some time up to Autotronics, and then we had yeah. Then we had one. We had one that uh, had a wiring issue, and all of a sudden they were driving on the road and lights would turn off. <laughs> you know, so we had to have that diagnosed and 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 fixed. We couldn't have it on the road in the in the inclement weather because um, it would just short out the wires and so they had to replace a, a series of wires and a whole harness underneath the truck and there's the problem is there's two sides right there's a there's a chevy side and there's an autotronic side um so you know you you gotta take it to bangor <laughs> you know and they have to take it all apart and there's a significant cost for that that you just don't plan for you know so yeah a few anomalies but nothing crazy yet <laughs> Yeah, one in training and one in overtime. Three. Yeah, potentially three, but that's that's for that's for us to discuss later on. Yeah. Okay. The, the two but yeah, the two that down, yeah. That and training. Training. Training and yep. overtime. Overtime. Yep. How many full time guys you got? During Seven during the day. Oh, during the day. So. Well, yeah, during the day. So you mean like on the, you mean like staffing? staffing. So yeah. I I staff. Four people well, plus myself. Well, plus you. Yep. Yeah, I'm. I. Uh, two crews. What's that? Two, crews. two crews. Yep. Right. And actually, I two and a half because I can typically get someone to drive the truck for me if we have an extra call, or if we have a paramedic call, I can leave the desk and go to Warren and that kind of stuff. So, and if something critical happens, which happens, I'm able to leave the desk and back through up. And so. And I'm also able to sit and work on budget stuff. So. <laughs> That's 24 hours a day. Two crews is the is the expected staffing part. But in that you don't have your your position. Correct. I'm home. One call. Pretty much. <laughs> the phone's always on. Pager's always on. Yeah. Yeah. The night that the store road happened, um, John Dangle made it a point to come in the next the next day and tell me one that the driver of the ambulance did an amazing job on Store Road, and just wanted me to know that the kid, because <laughs> you know, John and I are been here since dinosaurs were on the earth, forty-seven years, um, that you know was out and his and stayed with the ambulance and and he just he made it a point to come and say that it was you know yeah that was a long night it's like one o'clock in the morning really long night, night oh. one o'clock in the morning that you don't think you, oh maybe i won't have to go out tonight and there you are but all of our emergency services fire you know they're out at one o'clock in the morning and they're all police and public works in the snow Other questions?
questions? Comments? Billy, you'd have to have something. You've, you've always been ending it up, ending every, uh, you end every budget with a comment. Yeah. I just, I think Derek, he knows for the last two or three years I always had the golden question. I couldn't ask it this year because to the slutman and himself, they finally fixed the Jefferson and friendship problem. So I commend you for that. Thanks. Brian. You are. You're doing a good job, boy. Thanks. Boy. Kid. Kid, boy. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. We appreciate thank you. it. Thanks. We got 25 more minutes after before we, we, you know, we ended the last one. I don't think so. <laughs> no. I'm still recovering from that 10 after 9 one. <laughs> um, so on Tuesday, um, the fire department chief Smelter will be here. Um, so that's Tuesday evening. I devoted just Tuesday evening to the fire department. Does, does anybody else have any issue with that, or is everybody good with that? Um, so we have the fire department, and I will line up on Thursday night the um, other organizations that you want to come in to have a chat, and maybe we could talk about capital that night too if we have a chance on Thursday. Other organizations being being LCTV, LCTV food pantry. Food. Well, I, I, we got to talk about the food pantry a little bit. Um, that's one thing. Thank you, Billy, for reminding me that library okay, things, yeah. double things dipping. Like that. The, um, Sorry. Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, so the I've food pantry yeah. is on the actual warrant. That's right. We put them in here because yeah. if they is approved, we have to be ready to, we need to know what the impact is. They don't really have to come before the budget committee because they're on the warrant. However, their president, uh, Bill Blodgett, will be here. He graciously offered to come next Thursday. And if you guys have any questions, it's, it's not it's not a line item, it's not a line item you are going to vote on. Oh, wow. um, we don't make a recommendation. We do not make a recommendation because it's nope. actually That's through good. the petition. Okay. So you will be Bill is coming. He'll answer any questions you might have, but you're not going to get a yes or no vote on that line item. But we had to put it in so that it's in our budget document, um, but it won't be <coughs> the line items with the rest of the budget. But it'll give us an idea of where we'll be if that occurs. So they will, Bill, Bill will be here next, next Thursday. So if the town on the warrant, the town votes yes, yes. on that, then we have that it's number. Al it, yeah, it's already in here. If the town votes no, what happens to the food pantry? If the town votes no? If they vote against it. Then it's a no, then it's not funded. Then it's not funded. Oh. Then it's not funded. I mean, it's it's like just like the Waldo, when they went to their vote, was if, it said no, if they had said no, they wouldn't have been funded. So it will appear in the questions, it won't appear in the budget section. But I thought it was great Bill agreed to come and answer yep. any questions that any of the committee members or the select board might have for them. And I have not heard back yet from the Waldo. Um, so I will make sure to reach out again to them tomorrow. So I have, we have Paul here tonight. If there's anything you think you have questions about that you might need answered, he's here. On the way out, just say, hey, I'd like to know this, X, Y, and Z, if there's anything. Um, I think you got a good idea of what all the questions pretty much are just from watching the last two. <laughs> so I guess we are done if somebody wants to. 
there was a comment at a previous meeting about whether we needed the library representative or not, and the library representative is interested in knowing whether she planned for a visit. She can come on Thursday. I mean, do we want? Do we need to see the library? The number didn't change, so I no. don't see The library has been flat funded for three years. The only time it wasn't was when it was reduced. When it reduced, so yeah. it was, it was, it came back. Brought up. it back. Up. But, no, I, I didn't. They were not one of the organizations that they w was requested to to appear. Okay. If, if people have questions, uh, the library representative would be happy to answer them. So we uh, potentially no. Shall we adjourn the budget committee? Make a motion to adjourn the budget committee. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Okay, select board. I think I passed. Yeah. <laughs> okay, select board. Could I have a uh, motion for adjournment? So moved. Is second. there a second? Second. All in favor? Raise your right hand. All opposed? Motion carried. Bob, we don't want to talk to you. I don't have the money, but I don't Some of them. Some I ate some wine. That's a potential. Well, no, that's not that bad act. That's what it could potentially be. Yeah.